Hello, everybody on the internet, welcome or watching, and welcome to the end of an era. FLPW Show of the Masters 2021 is upon us, and this is capping off a w almost week and a half of wrestling goodness. I'm Jeffrey McCullough, and I'll be commentating the match tonight alongside Alex H. Ridian, as always, who I hope is doing fantastic. I'm doing great. Super excited. We've been building to this pay per view for over a week now. I'm sure anybody in chat right now is more than excited to see what we have on the ticket for tonight. And we have eight such matches on that ticket. Let's go over the awesomeness that's to come. First off is going to be our semi-final tournament match. Ultra Star Adams is taking on Salty Marcellus and this is going to be a huge match. The first uh, one of only two matches to determine who will be going into the finals tonight in our main event for that uh, grand final match. Uh, Ultra Star Adams and Salty Marcellus, both fantastic wrestlers, almost unstoppable on the way to this event, almost booking ourselves into a corner with the size of this uh, competition here. Um, but two amazing, amazing wrestlers and sure to be a very high energy opening match. After that, we have a free for all for the International Canadian Championship of the World. We have the greats of the division, Roger Olson and Johnny Talladega, and they'll be joined by uh, two people who have done excellent in this tournament. They made it all the way to round two, Erica Heyman and Father Briggs, and it'll be first fall wins the International Canadian Championship. That's right. Uh, Roger Olson, Johnny Talladega, uh, very uh, competitive wrestlers, but they did have very dominant opponents. Roger Olson losing to Hunter Hardgold and Johnny Talladega taking a loss uh, earlier, I believe, against uh, it was Saximus. El Saximus. Yeah, Saximus in an amazing bout. Probably one of the matches of the tournament to go watch if you haven't yet. Um, and then finally, we have Erica Heyman and Father Briggs uh, two wrestlers who made it all the way to the quarterfinals before unfortunately getting knocked out yesterday. All four of these wrestlers will be fighting each other to see who can get that first pinfall and claim the International Canadian Championship of the World. After that, our second semifinal tournament match, Marcus Gravy, the Gravy Train, who's been dominating the bracket in upset after upset, and he's going up against Heart of Gold, Hunter Hard Gold, who's also been on a rampage as well. And this is going to be a great match. Both these wrestlers defying expectations in the lead up to this match. Marcus Gravy with a very dominant uh, surprise victory over Ken Nakano. Uh, and we have uh, Hunter Hardgold uh, beating Roger Olsen, beating Tyler T-Man, and also after that beating Father Briggs. Uh, the former partner that he entered this tournament with he was able to overcome in the lead up to this match both these wrestlers have done more than enough to guarantee uh, uh some action tonight and the winner of this match will fight the winner of our opening contest between salty marcellus and ultra star adams and our main event at the end of the show the grand finals and that person is going to carry the world's bestest champion of the world championship belt into the new era of the flpw who is going to lead the torch into the unknown it's going to be one of these four individuals in front of you and i do not i, ca I can't place a bet yeah, there's absolutely no way to predict who is going to be the eventual victor here. We're just as excited as you are to find out for ourselves who will be the next champion of the world. But before that, we've got a lot of more matches for you coming up here in a doubles cage match. One of the two blood feuds that will end tonight, the power couple. Uh, Jordan Wassink and Julie Rutherford Hopkins III are looking to end their recent uh I'm going to put lightly disagreement with Dominic Pelletier. Uh, it's going to be a two on two match and Dominic Pelletier still has not yet told us who his partner is going to be for that match. So it's just question marks for now. Absolutely, we have no idea. Only Dominic Pelletier knows, but you would hope that he has picked someone 
strong enough to take on the power couple in this bout sure to be an interesting doubles cage match after that the doubles division match for the championship v nation who took a win over the missouri boys in a fantastic bout winning with that coup boot is going up against bulletproof pmc who are one of the two hated people in the flpw for all the wrong reasons it's a definitely good versus evil match here for the doubles division championship Sure to be a very interesting match. V Nation coming off a string of unfortunate last round losses um, in round two, but uh, definitely still a lot of power behind them. Still very dominant as a tag team, as you saw with that victory against the Missouri boys. Uh, we will see who takes the doubles division into the new era. After that, we have a preposterous six-man ladder match for the National U.S. Championship of America, and you do not want to miss this. This is going to be a beautiful mess. We have six individuals who are the shining wrestlers of the U.S. division, bare-knuckling with each other in order to erect a ladder in the middle of the ring and climb for that title that's going to be dangling above this. Saximus, Thomas Warren, Tyler, Straight Savage T-Man, Maximilian Wolf, Sarah Daystar, Cousin Trent McRae. It's a veritable who's who of the U.S. division over the FOPW's history here on Twitch. We're definitely going to see a impressive showcase of talent that the U.S. division has to offer, and it will all be worth it for that lucky person who gets the pin in this match to carry the national U.S. championship into the new era of FLPW. And the penultimate match before our world championship main event, Michael Saxton and Big Helton are looking to set their feud to rest. Big Helton, after losing a preliminary match on September 17th to get into the tournament to Michael Saxon in a very interesting way. Big Helton swearing it got a three count, but the decision being reversed on the fly, allowing Michael Saxton to capitalize and go for the win. Big Helton attacked Michael Saxton backstage last Tuesday before Michael's match, and he gave him the silencer onto the concrete floor backstage, and he was out for a couple of days, unable to participate in this uh, the opening days of the tournament, thus allowing Joshua Ferguson to get a bye. But this feud is ending here tonight. Absolutely, Michael Saxton and Big Hell and a lot of unresolved feelings coming into this match only can be settled in the ring. This will be a must-see event. And of course, our main event, the grand finals. But in order to get nothing to the more grand... needs to be said, we have two semifinal matches that will determine the next uh, uh, the, the, the competitors for this match. And it will be for the world's bestest champion of the world championship belt. And then let's get to our semifinals. Then I cannot wait. And here our we go. First match of the evening. Salty Marcellus and Ultra Star Adams. And it looks like. Salty Marcel is been making his way to the ring. A former tournament champion, he won the second ever FLBW single elimination tournament in the in late 2016. Oh, so long ago it felt, but here he is still at the top of his game. A lot to prove after being an undefeated national U.S. champion and vacated the belt to chase the world championship. That path has led him here to the semifinal matchup on this show of the Masters opening match. Salty Marcel is a almost in in play in unbeatable uh, U.S. champion during his reign. Uh, he only lost the belt because he willingly vacated it. This man is an MMA expert, a member of the original 14 submission hold master. Got everything going for him coming into this match. Has not yet seen anybody who's willing to demonstrate that he can rise to his level. We will have to see if Maximilian Wolf's star power will be enough to overcome. Uh, sorry, not Maximilian Wolf. <laughs> Ultra Star Adams' star power will be able to overcome that. And here he is entering the ring now. Ultra Star Adams, indomitable as ever, absolutely running over everybody in the bracket. In fact, though his performance in the tournament scared Jacob so stiff that he felt like he needed to be cheated, but did quite a sloppy job that would get him disqualified by the ref. So Ultra Star Adams getting the easier road into this matchup. Salty Marcellus defeated a uh, Jordan Wasink without Julie Rutherford Hopkins the third at ringside who had been helping him to cheat to get as far as he did in the bracket. And although he put up a good fight, Salty Marcellus reigned supreme. But it's definite, I've said this a lot this week, but we seem to be going into these unstoppable force, immovable object matches. And this is definitely another one of those. Absolutely. Salty Marcel is 100% the immovable object in this match. 
Uh, it only takes a short amount of time for him to just wear his opponent down, and then he can finish them off with that Salt Shaker, that multiple power bomb. Uh, truly a interesting clash of talents here. Ultra Star Adams cut and print. Very uh, versatile, very reliable. And here we go. The bell is being rung. Yeah, I don't believe anybody's kicked out of the cut and print alternate long once he's set, uh, got it set up. So that's what he'll be looking for in this matchup. With Ultra Star Adams in control now, got Salty in an arm lock. Now turning into a hammer lock. Really wrenching really the by Ultra Star. Oh, rocket punches to the back of Salty Marcellus here. Nice sidewalk slam there by the former world champion. Ultra Star Adams, definitely the vanguard in the tournament. He's the only one remaining in the tournament who was a previous world's bestest champion of the world as he delivers a big boot to Salty. Salty coming at that boot at high velocity after ricocheting off the ring ropes. Incredible feat of power from uh, Ultra Star Adams to begin this match. So now we seem to see Salty Marcellus turning things around. Whoa, big, oh. <laughs> big toss. There wasn't anything clinical about that. So Tossed the man... him up and let him fall to the mat there. Yeah, a bit of air mail there. Oh, and a big thrust kick. Salty Marcellus has got Ultra Star Adams right where he wants to. Just absolutely. Heated stomps to the, to the torso of Ultra Star Adams from Salty Marcellus. Looks like we're going to ringside. Interesting grab there by Salty that inadvertently got out of the way of Ultra Star's maneuver. But oh, look at that! Ultra Star looking Just, for maybe a thrust kick, and Salty Marcellus hitting right out of it. Ultra Star almost walking. Sorry, Marcellus almost walking over Ultra Star Adams here. Yeah, some Russell rolls on the outside, exacerbating any damage done to the neck and upper body there. Now wrenching on the neck. Now remember, pinfalls and submissions only count inside of the ring in this regular rules matchup in the semifinals. Referee on a six and count. And that's right. If you spend uh, up to a 10 count outside the ring, you will be disqualified. Dropkick hits true as Ultra Star is in control. Has he got planned? A Beal toss. The tail of the tape definitely favors Ultra Star Adams in this matchup. He's definitely got the height and weight advantage on Marcellus, but not by too, too much. Marcellus, no, Marcellus might have the height disadvantage here, but he's an expert on using people's weight and height to their advantage, using it against them. Of course, uh, Ultra Star Adams and Salty Marcellus remain untested against each other. Both wrestlers coming into this match with a undefeated record. And there we saw a uh, near fall that Salty Marcellus was able to escape from. Yeah, it takes a very consistent wrestler to get this far in a tournament setting. You need to not make any major mistakes. You need to play oh. everything carefully. But another thing is these two, whoever wins, they need to wrestle all the way at the main event at the end of the show. How much do you put into this match? Definitely a concern. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, these wrestlers are still going to give whatever they can. And we see the Tree of Woe there. Ultra Star Adams pressing his boot against the neck of Salty Marcellus. If I were to give some advice, you need to, you're going for the pin attempt here. If I were to give any advice, you definitely need to play a rather safe game. Do your bread and butters, no, do what you know works and win quickly because that just means more energy for becoming the world's bestest champion of the world. And Salty Marcellus is taking this outside the ring once again. Salty Marcel is just working. Oh. We'll just start down a little bit more, and we see him thrown against the steps there. Very dirty tactics by Marcellus. We see a jawbreaker there in retaliation. He stomps to the chest. Ultra Star not quite done yet. Go against the barricade. Oh, opening up a can of right hands there on Salty as he lays to the floor. Oh, and he fall, he fall, he fell back on the steps there. Did you see that? Ultra Star resetting the count here. Ultra Star taking this moment to just lay into Salty Marcellus. Oh, forearm to the oh, lower back. What a punch! These are some MMA style punches that we're seeing in retaliation from Marcellus, but. Ultra Star Adams, a stuntman. This man has had to punch people 
in his Hollywood uh, career. <laughs> Both on screen and probably backstage as well. Oh, a nice swinging Ooh. side slam there. Some classic Ultra Star offense going for the pin attempt off that, but that's not going to be enough. Not quite. Very impressive pin nonetheless. It's mostly been in Ultra Star's favor this matchup. Uh, definitely something I'd put money on. Ultra Star Adams has been an absolute force to be reckoned with in this tournament. The question is, Salty Taking Marcellus. down the light. Yep. Taking down the likes of Saximus on the way to this uh, match. Uh, what a very dominant uh, defeat that was for Saximus, who was originally one of the favorites to get this far. Yeah, Saximus, a former tournament winner in his own right. But yeah, it's former tournament winner versus former world champion. It's consistency versus power here in this matchup. I don't think anybody needs to be convinced that these two are world championship material. We see a tree of woe from Adams again. Yeah, a win here for Salty Marcellus is validation of all those years of trying to break into the world uh, world rankings, trying to get those title shots. A win for Ultra Star here, meaning that his dominance is proven once again, becoming a two-time world champion on the line for him here. And Salty fighting out with a big elbow. Salty does not want to be back in that corner. Ultra Star Adams once again getting back on top. That flatliner leading into another pin. Ultra Star Adams is very gung ho with these pins. And that was almost a three oh, count. Oh, so close. Salty Marcellus definitely the one on the edge here. What will he need to do to turn it around against uh, Ultra Star Adams in this match? Yeah, Seeing just, boot after boot yeah, by definitely Ultra some, Star. I, I dare not say the word low effort, but definitely low stamina moves here. Ultra Star Adams very clearly trying to conserve himself here. He knows that if he wins this... Oh! oh big, big knee, though. But once again, Ultra Star Adams with that spacing required to stay on top of things. The smart movements here from Ultra Star. Oh, backbreaker! Anytime Salty has the upper hand... Ultra Star finds a way to Dipsy One, out of it. One, two. two. Oh! oh. 2.99 there. It is not looking good for Salty in this matchup. He can he can definitely kick out of these pins, but how long will that last? He's not really pulling up much retaliation compared to the onslaught that Ultra Star Adams is delivering. Yeah, Ultra Star Adams just finds a way to get out of it, and we here comes the start of the Salt Shaker. That's one power bomb. One. Ultra Star Adams not fighting out of it. He's got him Two. in the grip. And there we go. A well Three seasoned. Three power bombs. A well seasoned Ultra Star Adams now lying in the ring. One. One. Two. Two. Mm, two point one. Just barely a two count. Well, that certainly seems to have made up some of the difference between Marcellus and Ultra Star Adams there. But we are going to need to see more action from Marcellus if he's willing to turn the tables. Oh, nice fighting out. That could have been really bad. Ultra Star Adams could have been setting up his corner leg drop. That's won him one match already this tournament. Big right hook to the rib cage there. Oh, into another Ooh. power bomb. Deciding not to go for the pin. Oh, goes for the pin. He just needed to reposition himself. One, two, only a two count. Salty doing a good, good job trying to stay on top of things. More you uh, wear but he's down got an uphill start. battle still. Oh, there's a death valley drive! Of... No, even oh! the second Counter half... into a Russian leg sweep. Yeah, we've seen the Death Valley driver take out two opponents already this tournament. Well scouted there by the Ultra Star. Ultra Star does not want to get into that Death Valley driver, completing the chain of moves for the shelt for the Salt Shaker. You know, a nice big mat slam. Nothing oh! pretty about that. But look at that nice arm drag there by Salty Marcellus. Now we seem to see Salty Marcellus putting up some equal offense to um, Ultra Star Adams. Finally, he seems to have found his second win. And maybe, maybe this will be the chance he needs to turn this match around. But how much has he left in him? We saw him barely escape from a pinfall at 2.99 we saw earlier. He needs to make as much out of this uh, time on top as possible.
Let's see right. a submission hold by uh, Salty Marcellus here. And what a victory this would mean for Salty Marcellus again. Like I said, he's been chasing that world title dream for over four years now. And to beat a competitor like Ultra Star Adams, that's There's one a power bomb. bomb. He's got the second. Two. Will he get the third. He's got three. that third. Oh. Another triple power bomb maneuver by Salty Marcellus. One. Two. Two. No kick out. Oh. Not quite. Not quite. Not. Not at three. Unfortunately, needing a little oh, bit more time. Oh, for the Death Valley Driver, but I'll just The Adams. Salt Shaker. There it is. Death Valley Driver. But he's he's gassed. He's not in position he's to pin him. exhausted. Neither wrestler able to get to their feet here. Oh, rolling back on his rolling on his back. This could be bad. This could be bad. I'll just start out of the one, one hand. One, two. two. And there's a cup of oh. kick out. Ultra Star Adams is still in this. He's received two Salt Shakers and one Death Valley Driver. One that's already been reversed before that, and he's still in it. The bad pin from Salty. No stamina to do a full hook of the leg, get himself to his feet, and that just cost him. Oh! World Championship Close opportunity line there. ahead for both of them. Well, we see the Kimura lock. Uh, we have yet to have seen Salty Marcellus pull out that submission. It is true. He's definitely got that back all worked up here, that Kimura lock. Able to dislocate arms, rip it right out of its socket using the leverage from his legs. Nice Salt devastating Marcellus has a plan in the top rope here. Oh my goodness, a falling second Superplex! Ropes. Oh my goodness, that Samoan drop from the top rope. That's got to be it. Two. No, that's a kick Not. <sighs> not three. Not it. So, uh, Ultra Star Adams is just finding more and more avenues to kick out of. Good spacing there by Ultra Star. And he's back on top, but not for long. A bulldog oh. reversal. Salty had it scouted. That's got to be it. Oh, no. Salty's not quite no. finished. Fireman's carry. A little bit of a cocky maneuver, and Ultra Star was able to turn it around in his favor. Oh, and a kick to the upper leg there. Ultra Star Adams seems to now be in the driver's seat. He looks like he doesn't have enough stamina to do what he wants to. He's got a dazed Salty in front of him, and he's just standing there. They're both just standing there, and Salty breaking it up. I don't know what Ultra Star was thinking. I think Ultra Star just had a shell shock moment there. That's going right the moment back left him. He's gone brain FK, and this might be it for Ultra Star. No, that's a kick out at 2.2. Ultra Star has to get his feet under him now, or he's going to lose this match to Salty Marcellus after so far of a trek to make. Losing out at the semifinal right before the grand finals match has to be just frustrating to deal with if you are the loser in this match. Neither wrestler really wanting that to happen. Ooh, it's all been salty in the last developments of this matchup to stop machine gun kicks there from salty marcellus to the chest of ultra star adams throwing him to the corner salty looking for some high risk offense going for a big back superplex there it is Salty that just could needs be to get it. a pin here. That could be it. Big One, offense like that. Two. No. Oh. Ultra Star not staying down. Even a superplex like that was not enough to put down Ultra Star Adams. I think a testament to just how dominant he's been up to this point. Definitely seeing a clash of wills between these two juggernauts. Oh, look at this. An interesting abdominal stretch, but he's got the leg locked in. Well, Ultra Star fighting out of it. He might get a hip toss here. Yes, he does. And that's the way you counter out of an abdominal stretch. Those of you with pencils and papers on hand. And Salty Marcellus is just keeping on things right now. That Still oh. finding the strength to counter after all that. And it looks like Ultra Star Adams is looking to get back at this in a big way. That second rope leg drop that's got him a tournament oh. win already this week. Is that it for Salty? One two no not 
a three count. Jeez. Salty Marcellus still finding more in the tank against Ultra Star Adams. Both these wrestlers being pushed their limit. Uh, oh, and a neck breaker there. That could be it. Again, any move at this point. No! What is it going to take? We saw this ordeal between Ultra Star Adams. Just not true out of test anything. Of the match. Oh, nice flip out there. Very smart, but a reversal jawbreaker there. Back suplex. Ooh. Salty Marcel is writhing in pain. I think if you had any hope as one of these talents that you'd be able to go into this grand final match uh, with full stamina, with the with at least some energy left, uh, these wrestlers proving to be not afraid to sap each other dry. And honestly, a match like that is going to be necessary uh, just to make it to that grand final. You really have no alternative. And Ultra Star Adams has yet to get that corkscrew axe kick that the cut and print out that's reliably gotten him to advance. If he gets that on Salty Marcellus, that could be it for him. So Salty's got to stay on top of things because you'll never know what it's coming. Oh, nice follow slam, more vintage oh. Ultra Star. And what's he planning? He's trying to get his stamina back. Ultra Star too exhausted to go down for the pin. Salty Marcellus wide open here. Ultra Star's planning something. So oh. Reversing out of it. Well, whatever plan Ultra Star had, Salty was able to reverse whatever that was. It. No, on two point one. Two count exactly there. Yeah, how do you try and win a match like this and still have enough for the main event at the end of the night? Now, granted, there are a lot, a lot of matches between now and then to recuperate, but if you get any injuries as a result from this bout, you might as well just kiss your world title shot goodbye. And Salty Marcel is looking to end this once again with another top rope maneuver, a Samoan drop, the second one we've seen. Ugh. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. That's too much offense done to Ultra one, Star. Two. No! No! Nothing can put him down. How many moves is Ultra Star Adams able to kick out of? We've seen Salty Marcellus take out every single good attack he could. A good reversal. Yeah, kicking out of everything. And another salt shaker. This has got to be it. This has got to be it. There is no way Ultra Star Adams is kicking out of a third salt shaker that's the most well seasoned competitor. Salty Marcellus is looking to move on. One, One two. Two. No! Oh. What is Ultra Star Adams made out of? He's just kicking out of so much. Oh, but this could be it! Death Valley Driver, the Ooh. second one! You Death can't. Valley Driver! But once again, Salty! Salty has to get the pin! He's on his he's on his belly! He can't be pinned on his belly! Gets him over! That was a lot of waste of time. This is it for the Ultra Star. One, it's gotta be. Two. No! Three! No! <laughs> I am what? incredulous here. Ultra Star Adams, that's the second salt shaker he's kicked out of. No way this man is human. The crowd is going crazy right now. Ugh. What? What can you do to somebody like Ultra Star who just kicks out of everything? Well, when your finisher isn't enough, then what do you have left? That's the question that Salty Marcellus has to answer against this defensive action. Not just one Ultra finisher, Star Adams two finishers. Built like a tank here, kicking out of any offense that Mar Marcellus can deliver. Adams back on the top rope again. We could be looking at another Samoan drop, the third one of the match. Like, what more do you have in your playbook to do to somebody oh. who just kicks out of your finisher moves? Marcellus not yet going for the pin, getting a leg kick. He's probably aware that Adams has a lot of energy left in him to kick out of everything. He needs to set up some sort of sequence here to end things once and for all. 
I think the only way to progress is either to just make him pass out. Big axe handle! Oh, oh that was so dirty looking. That is somebody who's desperate for a win here. Again, doing a Kicks dance here. The chest, punctuating that brutal axe handle we just saw. Oh, Walter Star fighting back finally. He's taking so How much. How does he have offense. the energy to fight back? Flatliner. Marcellus has just been brutalizing this man. Look at that. Ultra Star Adam's in so much pain. Just look at him wincing on his face. He's using all this time right now to recuperate stamina. Get some get some health back. Oh, salty with another bulldog headlock reversal there. Tippity 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 tippity. Salty in control. Knee into the mat. Ooh. What more can you do to Ultra Star that you haven't already done? And Ultra Star fighting out of it. Another fall away slam. Ooh. Ultra Star has to get this pin on Salt and Marcellus. We've seen what Mar uh, Marcellus is capable of. Again, he just doesn't have the stamina. He's creating these opening moments to try to get some sort of stamina back, and he's just letting Salty Marcellus get back in control. I don't know what's up with him. You you can't imagine it's so uh, difficult to get a pin on someone after you've knocked them down, but time and time again, Ultra Star Adam's not finding energy to do just that. He's picking his moments. He's trying to pace himself. Oh, but Salty Marcellus just getting back in control of things again. This is not how you win matches there. This could be it. Any move. Stomping again. We've seen Salty Marcellus go for less and less pins. He needs to know. He has to be aware. Ultra Star Adams is not just going to take a fall to any one pin. Oh my you goodness. have to Up weaken him substantially. That was a really bad pin attempt there by the former tournament champion. Snapmare. I see a headlock here now. World title opportunity on the line for later in the night. Crowd going wild. Ultra Star Adams just getting right headlock. back up. Oh, a stutter! the heck was that? Salty He's just... not done yet either. And there it is. This has got to be the third or fourth, fourth salt shaker. One. Two. Three power bombs. The yeah. salt shaker. Yeah, more salt than a large order of McDonald's fries that has got to caramelize his victory One. here. Two. No. No. <laughs> 12 power bombs so far in this matchup. And Ultra Star Adams has a back made of animancy, but this is it. This is it. There's no way he can kick out of not one, not two. Death Valley Three Driver. Three Death Valley Drivers, and Salty Marcellus is there immediately for the pin. This is it. This is one, it. There's no two. way. No! Oh. <laughs> Salty Marcellus is incensed as I am right now. How does he keep doing this? Ultra Star Adams kicking out of every single pin and just somehow uh, not able to make a pin of his own. Oh, but now we see him cut open. Salty Marcellus is just desperate at this point. I would be too. This man has uh, just got out of so many moves. You think he would be able to take a fall at some point. Snake Eyes right in there. He's cut him open and now he's looking to do as much damage as possible there. To start Adam's back body drop reversal. And once again, just standing there. Trying to recuperate that stamina. He just lets Salt and Marcellus take back control. So much wasted time by Ultra Star Adams. We've seen uh, a lot of defense on his part, but not really so much offense. 
Oh, here it is! Here it is! He's been setting that up oh. all thing! That's what's won him his previous two tournament things from out the of nowhere! The cut and print! He's been waiting for his opportunity. One. One. Two. Two. That's a kick out! Oh. That's the Told first person. Yep, yeah, that's the first person to kick out of the cut and print all tournament long. Even after a match like that, Salty Marcellus still summoning, summoning the energy to kick out of the cut and print. Salty Marcellus has been dominant for like the past fifth, like ten minutes or so, I'm willing to say. They're going to the top rope. We're perhaps going to see another back superplex. There it is. Back superplex. Salty Marcellus needs to get this pin now. He heard ya. He heard ya. Here's the pin. It bleeding. Ultra Star Adams. One, two, that's it. Three. It's finally Salty Marcellus. He's the one who finally slayed the beast that is Ultra Star Adams. And the question is, how racked is Salty Marcellus after a matchup like this? He had to bring out everything he had, and that was only the start to an uh, amazing pay-per-view. He still has to find more in the tank for that grand finals match later tonight. Truly a test of power. Salty Marcellus having to put away this wrestler who has remained dominant through this entire tournament and continued his dominance through so many attempted pinfalls. Salty Marcellus uh, just being pushed to his ultimate limit to defeat Ultra Star Adams in this match. What a show of force. Yeah, and it took so much to eliminate Ultra Star Adams from this tournament. The former world champion and Salty Marcellus had to do everything. But again, I keep asking, what is left? He's got pretty much the whole show to recuperate backstage. He's definitely got to ice his muscles. He's probably incorporated a lot of pain and he still has one more match ahead of him. I think the story of this match will be that Ultra Star Adams true, truly uh, had a massive amount of defense uh, in this match against Salty Marcellus' offense, but he just really did not have any uh, attacking moves in his arsenal to equalize the gap between himself and his opponent. And then we saw Salty Marcellus for the first time kicking out of the cut and print Ultra Star Adams' best move. What an impressive match. Salty Marcellus definitely deserving the win here. All right, you'll have to buy me some time while I set up this amazing next match coming up for you, the free for all for the International Canadian Championship of the World. That's right, Roger Olson, Johnny Talladega, Erica Heyman, and Father Briggs, all four wrestlers going against each other to try and claim that International Canadian Championship. This will be the first international canadian champion of the world in the 2k19 era the intro to what is going to be a fantastic uh new new reign uh just just fantastic uh wrestlers in this match uh we're sure to get a show tonight yeah, and we've got, this is a veritable who's who of the canadian division here uh, this is show of the masters and not only that this is the big show before FLPW is going to take another hiatus. I'm so sorry, everybody, to bring it back and then take it away from you for it so soon. But we really are entering a whole new era of the FLPW. I'm hoping to bring it to you sometime in November, but we are switching games. We've been using WWE 2K16 for six years now. I've been using it since it came out in 2015, and I've been running shows like this on Twitch intermittently all over a couple of years. It was mostly in 2016 and 2017, and just bringing it back here and there, but we're finally updating games, and that's going to give me so many more opportunities to tell so many better stories using all of these characters you've come to love, and I really hope it's worth the wait. We'll see that in this free-for-all match. Who will be the next Canadian champion of the world? Uh, we'll just have to see. Yeah, so here's the thing. Erica Heyman, Father Briggs, they did amazingly in this tournament, getting all the way to round two, where Roger Olsen and Johnny Teledega lost out round one, but they had to fight last night. 
What what do you do in a free-for-all against Roger Olsen and Johnny Talladega, who are awesome in their own right, definitely surprise dropouts from day one of the tournaments, who are now well-rested and hungry for another championship opportunity. Both of them are previous world, uh, international Canadian champions. Absolutely a major hurdle to cross here. Both these wrestlers having to face uh, off against each other to show how much they are worth this shot, uh, the, uh, just to go against each other, but also have to go against the other two wrestlers who will be competing in this event. Uh, just high stakes in this match. Sure, surely uh, no idea uh, who is going to come out on top. Uh, will the two champions wear each other down and open the door for another uh, wrestler to get the pin? So many unanswered questions. Yeah, and interestingly, the two non-champions going to this match have been definitely on a hot streak. Father Briggs getting defeated by Hunter Hardgold last night, but he's defeated the likes of Velze Formidil in a very awesome showing. All right, we're finally absolutely. Able to and to Her the match Erica here. Heyman, Erica Heyman, before she was eliminated, she put away Anthony Milbro Brown, defeating Chris Furious before uh, his elimination. Just, just high caliber wrestlers. All right, this match set for one fall for the International Canadian Championship of the World. Roger Olsen making his way to the ring. He dropped out to Hunter Hardgold, much like his compatriot in this match, Father Briggs. But definitely an upset. This man is a big star in the Canadian division. The question is, what will he do in a free-for-all format? That's right, Roger Olsen, untested in a ring with multiple other wrestlers. Uh, he's going to have to overcome a, a lot of tenacity, uh, a lot of initiative. Uh, he, he's got to be the first one to get that pin if he wants this uh, championship title. See him doing some paces in the ring as we wait for his next contender to enter. Next contender will be fellow competitor and somebody he's wrestled numerous times. Don't you know that he is the goddamn greatest? Johnny Talladega is making his way to the ring. Former four-time inter er, international Canadian champion of the world. Absolutely. Johnny Talladega having a uh, major history in FLPW. But even though his tagline is, don't you know he's the goddamn greatest? We saw him take a round one loss to Saximus on the way here. So still a lot to prove yeah, but just in match, the championship picture context. That match was so good. That was a match between former uh, tournament finalists, the third ever FLPW single elimination tournament, the one before this one. The grand finals were between this gentleman right here, Johnny Talladega, and Saximus. So it was a gigantic day one bout that Saximus pulled the 2-0 on him, defeating him for a second time in tournament competition. Definitely a chip on his shoulder, I'd say. Absolutely. He wanted more of a shot coming into this tournament, but to be placed against El Saximus so early on, definitely not ideal for him. That being said, this four-way match is another opportunity that he has to prove himself. We'll have to see how well he does. And the next person that's in the ring is Father Briggs, who made definitely stunned a lot of people with his run through the bracket. Not a lot of people thought he would make it as far as he did. He had to qualify for the tournament. He was not one of the 24 individuals already winning in for the event. He had to do a tag team match with the man who would go on to eliminate him for the tournament. He and Hunter Hardgold did a two-on-two -two match against, I believe it was... Sarah Daystar and... And Adam Rogovin. And Adam Rogovin. Thank you very much. That's right. Father Briggs gained the pin on Sarah Daystar in that qualification match, having to face off against his former uh, partner for the qualification, Hunter Hardgold, in a uh, very impressive bout. Uh, hard fought between the both of them. Just barely Hunter Hardgold was able to put Father Briggs away. Even though that the, uh, the world title picture has faded away... For Father Briggs, this will be his opportunity to shoot for the Canadian title. Yes, he's never won a title in the FLPW yet, has Father Briggs. And a win here will be a big boost to his 
uh, what I what we learned yesterday is now a fledgling school of the Word of Pain. He was accompanied to the ring by a student who we still don't know who that was. He was in quite heavy disguise. A lot of mysteries coming into this match, both for the outcome and also for the future for Father Briggs. But here we have Erica Heyman. A top competitor in the Canadian division. He's, she's wrestled Johnny Talladega for the title once coming up short. And she's looking for her first title to cap off an amazing debut since we last left off of the FLPW in 2018 or so. Even within the context of this tournament, Erica Heyman has been very dominant, putting away Anthony Milbro Brown after he defeated Chris Furious. Uh, a, a, a very hard fought, ultimately a loss uh, against Marcus Gravy. And that is what a fantastic match. That is something I want to bring up that got the ire of a lot of people. This is Show of the Masters 2021. This is a goodbye to the 2K16 era, uh, era. And Chris Furious isn't even on the card tonight. What a fall there from the former two-time world's bestest champion of the world. Losing Absolutely. And Erica Heyman, no small part about that. Uh, Milbro Brown as well. Two uh, big uh, wrestlers just uh, seeming to replace the old guard in this uh, tournament. Now we have the, the match on underway here. Here we go. Erica with that stretch on Father Briggs and Roger Olsen and Johnny Taylor Digga wasting no time getting to it. An old rivalry re rekindling there. Uh, Johnny Talladega getting an early lead over Roger Olsen as Father Briggs knocks out Erica Heyman. They're on the outside now. Up on the arm breaker there. Johnny Talladega is in control of his bout against Roger Olsen. Father Briggs wrenching the neck of Erica on the outside. Father Briggs, plenty of free reign to do on the outside whatever he wants as uh, Johnny Talladega and Roger Olsen go at it in the ring there. Now, this matchup, for those of you who do not the, know the rules of a free uh. for all match, oh, that was a devastating maneuver. Pins and submissions need to happen in the ring, but there are no DQs, and Roger Olsen hitting the former Canadian champion with the steel chair. Grab a what seat. What the heck is the referee doing? Just a dead eye stare in the center of the ring, not <laughs> seeming to even care about what's going on on the outside as we see a chair to yeah, the head no, of Johnny no, Talladega. Yeah, no disqualifications here, but pins and submissions need to happen inside the ring. I think the referee is just oh, in there questioning his bat. life decisions. Erica Heyman wrestles away the baseball bat from Father Briggs, and we're having a bat steal here. And clonk! And Erica Heyman is just hit over the head. Ooh, that was hard to see. And we just see Father Briggs knocking her again and again with that bat, just wailing on the back of Erica Heyman. What brutality. Oh, into the ring post there goes Roger Olsen, but Roger Olsen fighting out Johnny Talladega, getting introduced to his back of his elbow. Erica Heyman back in control of her match against Father Briggs. Looking for an exploder suplex, gets it. Roger Olsen, vicious, educated right hooks. And some right punches there to Johnny if Talladega. If I had to guess, I, if I had to guess, I think the ref in that ring there is replaying the events of Sex in the City 2 and his head completely disconnected from what is going on outside. Yeah, he's waiting for somebody to get into the ring so he can officiate his job. Oh, there we go. He snapped out of it. And Roger Olsen's grabbed the stairs. Will he be able to get yep. to Taladega? <laughs> yes, he does. Taladega taking... <laughs> oh, that is just unnecessary he's not done with the stairs either oh maybe he is maybe he isn't though maybe he is maybe, <laughs> maybe he, he isn't, isn't. <laughs> maybe, maybe he, isn't. he is i love her i love her not i love her i love her not <laughs> speaking of which erica Heyman making use of that baseball bat once again on father briggs it looks like we're getting back into the ring the referee looking forward to doing his job here in just a moment is big club and forearm and a big knee Referee yep. having to pause reruns of The Real Housewives as he watches what's going on in front of him. Yeah, on his phone there. Now, Erica Heyman and Father Briggs on the outside there need to pay close attention to what Roger Olsen and Talladega are doing because it is first fall wins. It is not elimination. They need to break up any pinfalls that happens as Roger Olsen unleashes a fury of strikes on Talladega's very punchable face, I may add. Flurry of blows from Roger Olsen there. Erica Heyman and Father Briggs not slowing down the slightest. And Erica Heyman back on the inside. 
Will she be able to turn this tide between uh, Roger Olsen and Johnny Zaldega? It seems that Johnny wants to go after Erica now. Erica's substantially weakened from that brawl she just had with Father Briggs. And the first pin attempt, but Wilson's there to break it up. Immediate breakout by Olsen. He wants some of Erica now. We see three wrestlers now fighting over Erica, trying to get the pin on her first. We got oh, and Roger Olsen already looking for the Olsen ending, it looks like. And he'll get it. There it is. Let's we'll Talladega break up the Olsen ending by pin. Roger Olsen. He's trying to go for a pinfall. Johnny Talladega a little bit distracted here with Erica. One. Two. And barely a breakup. Barely a breakup. And the refrain. Father, the, the refrain from Erica. Will we see a pin from Erica on Johnny Talladega here? Father Briggs One, interrupting it, though. Two. Father Briggs getting in there. We've seen an Side Olsen ending, we've Father seen a Briggs. refrain. This is definitely a slobber knocker. What an interesting leg pick there by Johnny Talladega as Father Briggs looks to go for a top rope maneuver on Erica, but Erica catches her oh. into a high note. That's gotta what be impressive it. Does Talladega we even know what happened? Yes, he does. Father He's breaking up the pin. Uh, Erica did not get out of that clean though. She's now bleeding from the forehead. Father Briggs not good. He's been assaulted by that baseball bat, and now he's been the recipient of a high note. But it looks like it's his turn to catch one of his signatures, going for a crucifix power bomb if he's able to get out of it. But no, Erica DDT reversal. What an impressive reversal by Erica. Now we see Johnny Taldeg and John uh, Roger Olson going at it on the outside Another here. Another refrain. The pin is wide open for Erica to claim here. Will she be able to get it? And Roger Olsen is all the way on the outside. One, He's looking to go from downtown. Two, and Erica three, Heyman is your we new... We have and new international Canadian championship of the world champion, Erica Heyman. A long time coming for Erica Heyman. Ever since she debuted, she's had her eyes on that Maple Leaf belt, who was at the time held by Johnny Talladega. Brooding the hopes of Dominic Pelletier fans as she stole his rematch spot in a storyline back then and now the fruits of her labors have now really now sprout to a fruit in the shape of the International Canadian Championship. And she what an impressive yeah. showing by Erica Heyman. Uh we the question here in this match was gonna be uh will one of the green wrestlers be able to capitalize on the chaos in the ring? Uh uh what we saw from Erica was that that entire finish was all her. She had been working against uh, Father Briggs that entire match, and she got exactly what she put effort into. She, that This was not a cheap pin against somebody who was weakened by the other wrestlers. This was someone who she had a laser focus on the entire match, and uh, what an impressive pin that was yeah, to the, end it. The falling high note, an impressive maneuver that was broken up, but nobody is in the same county to break up that refrain. And Roger Olsen, very frustrated there, as you see, was like, damn it. Just too late, a championship opportunity slipping away from his fingers, and Erica Heyman bloodied in the forehead slightly. Canadian champion. What a match. What an amazing match. Erica Heyman will be your new international Canadian champion leading into the 2K19 era of FLPW. What an amazing event that was. All right, we just saw a honestly maybe 30 minute drag them out brawl between salty marcellus and ultra star adams to get into the main event of tonight and we are seeing part two of that marcus gravy or hunter hardgold is going to be facing salty marcellus in the main event and marcus gravy what a run this individual has had through the tournament the upset machine the gravy train cannot stop upset victories against heavyweights Ken Nicano and Sergeant Mitchell Cooper who were favorites to win the whole tournament and they've all fallen to the train baby absolutely both Marcus Gravy and Hunter Hardgold completely outperforming expectations in their tournament runs this will be underdog versus underdog both these guys seemingly unstoppable unfortunately because they will be they will be in a match together one of them will have to be stopped to give the other that place in the finals match against Salty Marcellus. Yeah, and Marcus Gravy, the story with his matches has just been winning them out of nowhere. The, uh, I think I have the replay, and yes I do. Like, look at this win in the second round against 
uh, Sergeant Mitchell Cooper. This came out of nowhere. Just that spear, that pop-up spear, and he's dead. That is a dead man you're looking at in that replay. That's the one, two, three for that win. And wow. Marcus Gravy's spear coming at completely uh, unpredictable moments. But you also have to say the same thing about Hunter Harkle's finisher the hard way. Uh, just and the two golden fantastic well. situations. Yep, the golden pin as well. And now we see Hunter Harkle entering with Eddie Chumbo one last time for the last uh, event that he'll be wrestling in before uh, the end of the 2K16 era of FLPW, the Hardcore Union. Yeah, you can't bust this union. These two have gotten the ire of the whole FLPW locker room, but they are still left standing in this World Championship tournament. Eddie Chumbo's been no small help helping Hunter Hardgold through his tournament. Although, if you compare him to somebody like Jordan and Julie, he's a veritable saint, but he's definitely been up to no good there at the ringside. Hey man, seeing the action that the power couple has been getting involved with in this tournament, I will take the Hardcore Union any day of the week. I'm sure Marcus Gravy feels the same way too. A lot of people want Marcus Gravy to win the championship. A big underdog story. Nobody knew that Marcus Gravy would make it this far into the tournament. Everybody counted the former U.S. champion out as a flash in the pan, but he has proven himself to be utterly dominant in this tournament, and he is definitely a shining light to perhaps lead the world championship into the new era. That's right, the gravy train making a very spirited entrance into this ring just has been unstoppable this entire tournament. Uh, it's hard to imagine being stopped by Salty Marcellus uh, if he does get a victory in this match. Truly uh, an indomitable force. Yes, and again, will they have learned any lessons from our opening contest between Ultra Star Adams and Salty Marcellus? How hard are these two going to work? Because Salty Marcellus is backstage nursing so many injuries. He's got more ice packs than a dollar store freezer display. So if they're able to win this match with uh, very few physicality, maybe Gravy can pull one of his wins out of nowhere. Maybe Hard Gold can get that golden pin locked in and pretzel Gravy to a victory. They might have an easy championship match ahead of them. As easy as it would go against even a 50% Salty Marcellus. That man will punch you to death with so much as look at him. Hunter Hard Gold getting uh, Marcus Gravy in a hold there uh, before breaking, just managing to get a uh, massive fist in. Marcus Gravy towering over the challenger and a big punch there, a little bit of a sucker punch there, and Marcus Gravy returning the favor. Huge punches. Oh, what a punch sending uh, Hunter Hargold to the mat. Getting him away from the ropes. Into a, uh, yes, a Cloverleaf. Oh, Cloverleaf oh. backbreaker. Very interesting offense there. Looks like uh, Marcus Gravy took a hit to the back of the head, though. Didn't really get clean out of that himself. Looking for a snap Ooh. suplex. Impressive snap suplex by Marcus Gravy. It's all been Marcus. Now, does Hunter have a chance against somebody so huge? as all oh, that forearm missing. That was a mistake there by Gravy, but it looks like Gravy's still on top of things. Big bottom of slam. Throws down hard gold there. kick to the back it's all been gravy this matchup absolutely gravy just seeing hard gold as a target for his many strikes and it's yeah it's still more gravy offense here that leg trip sending the back of hard gold's head but hard gold with an arm drag reversal there he needs to do a lot to catch back up here Backbreaker. Oh. Maybe Hunter Hargold now has the initiative here. So the book on Marcus Grady has always been that he is a very strong competitor, very hard hitting. Oh, but just an amazing back elbow counter there by Gravy, but Hunter Hargold being able to stay on top of the situation. Now Gravy's on the outside. But the book on Gravy used to be he had a really bad late game. The longer the match goes on, the less it's in Gravy's oh. favor. But, oh, God right into the ring post. 
the gravy showing us that he is not a not just a simple go hard and then pass out kind of wrestler. Marcus Gravy throwing a, uh, into the ring post another ring post shot. And Hardgold running back into the ring, but Gravy's dizzy. <laughs> Hardgold getting a little words in. I think Hardgold probably missed an opportunity there. The referee Gravy almost had to an shake out of it. Nice reversal there. Well scouted by Hardgold. Ooh, but just the big power of Gravy fighting out of it. Now Hunter Hardgold's on the top rope. Oh, oh. but he kicks Marcus Gravy. Going to go for a flying maneuver. Oh, big Ooh. clothesline there. Finally gets Mark. Top Getting rope some... clothesline by Hunter Hardgold. Oh, vicious punches there. Eddie Chumbo likes what he sees. Definitely giving uh, Marcus Gravy a run for his money in this final semifinal match. Hunter Hardgold, a veteran of the Devils division. Doesn't have too much of a singles career to him, but he definitely has a feather in his cap with how well he's done in the single elimination tournament. Look at that chin lock. Gravy unable to fight out of it. Maybe if he was a bit bigger, Gravy would have had a grasp, oh. but... Kick to the face, punch to the arm. Hunter Hargold not letting up. Finally, Whoa. Marcus Gravy turning it around. And the big men having a big discussion here as Chumbo distracts Gravy for a little bit. Re inverted neckbreaker into a regular neckbreaker. We've seen time and time again Eddie Chumbo managing to get into uh, Hunter Hargold's opponent's heads, getting that crucial distraction, allowing Hunter Hargold to turn things around. And as we see, he is capitalizing on that and more. Argold. We see Marcus Gravy about to be knocked to the outside. A oh, hot shot. Gravy sent to the outside. Almost serving as punctuation for that. A lot of the leg there, some leg stomps to the belly. Nothing more simple than just getting some additional strikes in while your opponent is knocked down, weakening them more and more. Sometimes Gravy. that's all you really need. We're oh, going for a leg drop here. More classic Ooh. hard gold on the apron, which as you know leg is the drop. hardest part of the wing. And Eddie Chumbo's getting the stairs. Don't know what that was about. But well, we've seen him uh, have a fondness for for uh, stairs before. Uh, he's grabbed the stairs in multiple matches, even when he doesn't end up using them. I just think that Eddie Chumbo has a thing for stairs. A two count there is once again, Eddie Chumbo momentarily distracts a gravy for hard gold. Once again, made right on top, but a big boot. And he's back on top. The gravy train full steam ahead here. Pump handle suplex. Ooh. Oh, that's one. Oh, he's got a teardrop in, not a pump handle. I'm sorry. Two of them. He's going for a combo here. So teardrop suplex Indeed. combos. The gravy train, dude. The gravy train is chugging along in this match. Just multiple suplexes. One of his signature moves. But Marcus Gravy seems to be a little bit stuck here. Which is probably to his benefit since the referee was distracted by Chumbo. That might have been a calculated maneuver, but that is too much time there. Hardgold kicks out at one. Eddie Chumbo, another difference made for Hunter Hargold in this match. Oh, whoa, oh. big drop kick. Holy moly. What an unexpected drop kick from Hunter Hargold there. Elbow drop to boot. Oh, and Hardgold looking for the hard way. This has had a mixed, hard way by hard gold. This has had a very mixed success rate in the tournament, but will he get One, to the grand finals? Two, three. No, no, that not referee quite. reversing. That had got to. That was a three. That was three. That was that three. That had to be a three. But that it doesn't matter. Looking to get, looking to get the golden pin here. And gravy catches it. Gravy reverses the golden pin attempt, and he's got him into a cloverleaf. Another clover leaf by Gravy. And uh, he gets under the ropes. And out of the ropes. And Eddie Chumbo still... Uh, he's wearing the You Can't Bust This Union shirt, but it still looks like he's bandaged up from his bout against Ultra Star Adams all the way back last Tuesday. Nice catch there. Eddie Chumbo careful... No oh, the stairs! Eddie Chumbo, or uh, sorry, Marcus Gravy stumbled on the stairs there a little bit. Maybe Eddie Chumbo's uh, 
stairs uh, fetish has seemed to come into play finally. <laughs> Don't call it a fetish. Oh my god. A beetle toss there by Gravy. And old oh, Chumbo trying to get... Chumbo would have laid hands on Marcus Gravy. That could have been a disqualification in his favor. That was uh, almost a bad move there on Chumbo's point. And Hardgold running back into the ring here. And Gravy having plenty of time to recover. Oh, getting distracted once again. How many times is Gravy going to get distracted? But back of the elbow and he's back on top. Eddie Chumbo has just been a master distraction this entire tournament. And uh, even in this semifinals match, we're seeing that come into play. Marcus Gravy being staggered by almost the 2-1-1 uh, the, 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 the action from the Hardcore Union. Uh, Eddie Chumbo proving to be a master manipulator here. Oh, but he manages to break out of that. Nice job break reversal there, but just like that, hard gold is back again on top. Oh no! Nope. Back elbow. We've seen that back DDT. elbow time and time again. And he's open. We got a bleeding wrestler in the ring here. Gravy looking for the pin here. Going for a cover. One, two. Ah, uh, it's a kick out. He's gonna need a bit more coverage than that if he wants to pin the pin hard gold here. For that spot in the main event. Championship opportunity on the line. Hard gold, big flipping offense there. Stomps here. the ropes we might see some more fighting at ringside here Hunter Hargold pulling up Marcus Gravy oh into the chairs right against the chair oh and he's, and he's telling him that he's number one there oh into the ring oh. post Still fighting at ringside here. Semi-final tournament match here. Going back into the ring. Ooh. Northern Light Suplex. Two. Oh. Ah. Almost a championship spot there secured for a hard gold, but Gravy barely kicking out. Gravy thrown against the nap by hard gold. What will it take Gravy? To turn this around, Hard Gold definitely Going on the, the upper way. hand. The hard way. He got he it. He has hit the hard way. This is the second time. One. Gravy looking back. Two. No, Gravy kicks no. out. No. Championship hopes Gravy's, still on Gravy's line. time is running out here. Yeah, if he gets caught in a golden pin at this point, that's got to be it. Oh. Gravy once again did distracted. Eddie Chumbo. Just distracting Gravy. The, the way opened it. up for Hard Gold here. Looking for the golden pin. We saw Will we Gravy see it, the golden pin? This could be it for Gravy's championship hopes. Hunter Hard Gold gets the golden pin. Golden pin. That's it. One, two. No. No. Gravy kicked out of the golden pin. Gravy escaping from the golden pin. He still has plenty of fight left in him. But how much of a difference will he be able to make this late in the match? So much offense being used here. Gravy just needs to get some big offense in. It's all been hard gold thus far with the help of Eddie Chumbo. Under hard gold, just arms wrapped tightly around the neck of Marcus Gravy there. Weakening him, wearing him down. In control still. Oh, Gravy fighting back out. Back elbow. Oh, and once you see again. that back elbow get Marcus Gravy out of baby sticky situation, but same is true with Eddie Chumbo distracting Marcus Gravy whenever he gets the advantage. Something has to be done about Gravy getting distracted by Chumbo time and time again here. Hargold on the outside. Oh, big elbow. 
Been walking Elbow there, drop the from the top rope. Stop in the hand there. Kick to the shoulder. Gravy fighting out of Back it. Back elbow again. Oh, but Eddie Temple fight. not there to distract him this time. Oh, he doesn't need him, arm. though. Hargold just beating out of it with sheer brute force. A little back rake. Hargold got something pump handle related. Oh, jeez. Back of Gravy's head going on the knee of Hargold. Great, he's not doing well right now. And a third Absolutely hard way. Not. This has got to be it. Ooh. This has got to be it. Gravy's just been beaten up so much this match. And there it is. The that Gravy is it. Train. Hunter hard gold. Coming to an end here with Hard Gold and Eddie Chumbo. They've got a championship opportunity against Salty Marcellus in the main event. And that what a dual offense of Hunter Hargold and Eddie Chumbo, enough to finally derail the gravy train tonight. What, what an impressive match by both wrestlers. And unfortunately, uh, Marcus Gravy not able to counter the dual offense, the the, the, the silver-tongued words of Eddie Chumbo, the brutal uh, uh, power and strength of Hunter Hargold, just double-teaming him and leaving no room for him to get over. There we go. That was one of three hard ways. And Marcus Gravy just, even though he's been dominant in this tournament, he just got let the words of Eddie Chumbo get to his head and the mind games being overcome, or the mind games overcoming the muscle games, as it were. T terrible analogy, but you get what I'm going at here. Yeah, we've seen Marcus Gravy has a lot of power in him, but you have to, you have to be thinking about whether that uh, in interference uh, by Eddie Chumbo costed him a championship match tonight. Fortunately, there's no room for hypotheticals now as Hunter Hardgold will be the one to face Salty Marcellus in the final, uh, the main event for the uh, world's bestest championship of the world championship. All right, we've still got Four, uh, five more matches for you to go. I know basic arithmetic, don't worry. Coming up next, Indeed. Dominic Pelletier and a mystery partner is going up against the power couple in a cage match. This feud simmering for such a long time, the power couple getting very much involved in Dominic Pelletier's uh, run in this tournament. First, Julie Hopkins uh, providing a major obstacle uh, between uh, herself and her partner, uh, uh, Jordan Wassing against Donald Peltier in the qualifiers. Don Peltier just barely able to win over Julia Hopkins, but his first opponent in round one was Jordan Wassing. And Jordan Wassing and Julia Hopkins basically brutalized him enough to the point where he was not able to overcome the difference with the shadiest tactics you could possibly imagine. Jordan Wassing was able to defeat Donald Peltier for that round two position, unfortunately losing to Salty Marcellus. Uh, Oh, not losing to. I'm uh, sorry. He he also got a victory um, before facing Salty Marcellus. A victory, another very questionable victory over El Coogs. Just a uh, just a brutal uh, showing of of just how much the rules lack uh, to handle a ruthless couple such as these two. The power couple making their entrance now. Yeah, and there's a long break between now and the next FLPLW stream. This is the end of an era show of the Masters 2021. So this feud gets settled now or never in a cage. Now, what does a cage do to this matchup? An increase in brutality, no disqualifications. Basically, it's just you and it's your opponents in the ring together. And there's really uh, nothing else that can be done. Uh, it's only until one person has been... Uh, beaten down to the point of no return. Uh, will you be able to get that victory? Very high stakes in this match. Now, the obvious literal question marks in this case, um, 
in reference to our graphic is who did Dominic Pelletier convince to get in the ring with him against the power couple here? He's it not coming out with them. Guest. Dominic Pelletier is not fighting them one on two, is he? That'd be that'd be suicide. No, we have been informed that Dominic Pelletier will be coming out with a a, a partner in this match. Oh. Um, very, very much leaving it to the last moment for us to be on the edge of our seats as to who is going to be joining the ring with him. Yeah, I can't. You see the Quebecois superstar from downtown. Yeah, that amazing coast-to-coast -coast drop kick. No other person in the FLPW is able to get the height that he does off the top rope. Drop kicking across the stage. And let's see his mystery partner. Who's it going to be? Oh, the lights are going... Interesting colors here. It's El Coogs! It's El Coogs! That's right, El Coogs, a vendetta against Jordan Wassing for ending his championship run early with those very devilish tactics. Uh, El Coogs will be wrestling in a one-time-only bout, uh, teaming up with Dominic Pelletier against the Power Couple. What an amazing turn of events this has proven to be. Now, I imagine the conversation between Dominic Pelletier and El Coogs was a very short one because El Coogs has all the reasons in the world to go after El Coogs. Or El Coogs has all the reasons in the world to go after Jordan Wasink here. And. Kugai. These wrestlers I'm, wasting no time. Already getting a chair is Julie Hopkins. Julie tosses a chair in the ring. And of course, this is a no disqualification cage match. Anything goes, really. Yeah, and what better person to have in the ring with you than the monster of V Nation, El Coogs. Now, V Nation is fighting for the Doubles Division Championship, so a lot of people ruled El Coogs out from participating in this match because they figured that it would be Jake Rapture and El Coogs defended the championship. With El Coogs in this uh, a steel cage match, it looks like the Freebird rule will be invoked, and it will be Tom Mann and Jake Rapture contesting the doubles division championships later tonight. El Coogs saving himself for this impressive bout of uh, this blood feud being resolved against the power couple with Dominic Pelletier. Yeah, and El Coogs, a veteran doubles division wrestler, he, that ass assisted Coog boot allowing V Nation to get in the spot they're in tonight for the doubles division championships, a very, very decisive victory over the Missouri boys. And Dr. Pelletier is working on the arm of Julie Hopkins as Jordan and El Coogs get at it. Jordan throwing hands against El Coogs. He seems to be the dominant man. El Coogs falling down on that uh, chair right there. Oh, right in oh, the Right to the head. That's got to remove some brain cells there. You have to get through five inch concrete before you get to any brain cells in El Coog, I'll tell you that. And a wailing on him, a beel toss, and Julie in control of his matchup against um, Dominic Pelletier. And once again, this is not elimination. This is first fall wins. Settling the Absolutely. feud once and for all here. But what will it take to get that first fall? Uh, this is a no DQ, all uh, anything goes match. Uh, wrestlers encouraged to do whatever is necessary to defeat their opponents. Uh, to what end will these uh, teams have to fight in order to get that victory tonight? They're really putting themselves on the line. And the power couple in complete control right now. I'm going for a pin. Dominic's down, not able to help El Coogs, but he kicks out. A little bit of miscommunication between uh, uh, Jordan Wassing and Julia Hopkins. Jordan Wassing clearly had some sort of jump planned on El Coogs while he was down, but Julia Hopkins just going ahead and getting the pin early. I think that was what El, El Coogs really needed to, to get back in control here. Yeah, that might have been uh, Julie Hopkins. Shooting star press, but oh. right onto the chair! Onto the, onto the ah, chair! What a fatal I misstep think, there by the former Canadian Jordan's champion. I think Jordan's face got the majority of that blow as well. Truly a very unfortunate position to land your shooting star press. And the cross-border connection here in control, but Julie fighting out of his her bout with uh, El Coogs here. And El Coogs is in the corner. And Dominic Pelletier with a pin attempt. Aw, oh, kick out there by Jordan. Ooh! Flying Larry, and now Julie is on the top rope. Shooting star splash. Ooh, shooting star press. Shooting oh, star and you press. saw the, the, uh, the, Dominic the doesn't ricochet. See it of El Coog's uh, head on the back of that chair. Must have done some additional damage. Leg oh. drop. 
Leg drop from Don Peltier. Huge leg drop now we might see a pin on Jordan uh, Jordan Wasting here. No, he's doing some more offense on him. Elbow drop by Julie Hopkins. Oh, another pin attempt. One, two. Julie Hopkins is getting a drop. Three. What? There what? it is. What happened there? What happened with Jordan to get the victory there? What a surprise finish. That just kind of ended. I totally missed that. What was going on there? We'll have to see the replay. I'm confused and stunned. And was there an injury or something? What happened? You see Don Peltier with the leg. One, two. Not now there's quite. that diving clothesline there by Julie Hopkins. And this is the shooting star press attempt that we saw. Dominic Peltier's got... Jordan in that head scissors. That top All of our focus was on drop. Julie Hopkins and El Coogs. We were barely even able to see how that match ended. And look at this, Dominic Pelletier. Head scissors, elbows here. Right in the head. And Jordan's pinned here. And then one. One, two, two, and then three. three. A very, very lackluster showing from the power couple, I might say. I honestly think if you wanted to undermine the power couple with this cage match, uh, Dodic Pelletier and El Coops humiliated them. Well, that is a the good exact... point. Jordan did do an entire shooting star press face first into that chair, so there was a lot of head damage, to be fair. That is a good point. Absolutely, and I honestly think this is probably the best outcome given that Jordan Wassink and Julie Hopkins made a fool of both El Coots and Don Pelletier, uh, we may have seen uh, just the end that this feud desired. Uh, uh, and it will be uh, Don Pelletier and El Coots clutching on the victory there. But here we go, coming up next, big championship match, V Nation, the crowd favorite, going up against probably the most hated two individuals in all of the FLPW. Oh my goodness. What can we say about this? Well, let's talk about V Nation first. One of the most dominant tag teams in all of the FLPW. They've held the belts two times already. They were the champions going into the previous FLPW hiatus before picking things back up in 2021. That two and a half year gap, should I add. Uh, between that two and a half year gap, all the championships have rescinded. We have a new Canadian champion in Erica Heyman. She'll be your champion going into the 2K19 era. And will the V Nation continue to ride high here going into their matchup? That's right. This will be the second of four different championship match uh, matches booked for tonight. Uh, v Nation getting that win o o over, uh, I believe, the Missouri Boys yep. and Bulletproof PMC uh, taking a big victory uh, ag against... Uh, Against uh, the, the Flying Dutchman in a Against the Flying Dutchman, thank you. match. It was... Oh my goodness. Let's not dwell on that, but right now we have V Nation going to see if they can hold out against Bulletproof PMC. Uh, truly an amazing book, uh, book uh, match booked for tonight. Yeah, V Nation, like I said, one of the most loved tag teams. Bulletproof PMC going into this, attracting the ire of everybody, including us two in the commentary booth. We might see a little bit of bias here going into this match, but we'll try our best to be as neutral as possible. No promises, though. <laughs> we'll to get this match loaded up for you here tonight. That's right. If you're wondering uh, why why we're uh, holding such an attitude against Bulletproof PMC, you really got to roll back the tape on last night's match. Uh, we're not going to do it for you. Just go watch it on your own time and you'll understand. Yeah, if you have 37 minutes and 22 seconds of your life to spare. And incoming to the ring first, V Nation riding high on their victory last night against the Missouri Boys, a commanding victory. Thomas Warren looked super strong in that match for the Missouri Boys, but in the end, he succumbed to the assisted Coog boots, and these three individuals are looking for the third doubles division championships for their stable. And El Coogs is going into this as well. Like, he's still fresh from that match. That didn't really take a lot out of him, considering how quick it ended up being with Jordan Wasink taking a lot of damage off of that failed shooting star press and Dominic Pelletier finishing him off with the elbows to the head there. You usually associate cage matches with uh, brutality injuries, but that was just so humiliating for the power couple that 
Uh, Donna Pelletier was able to end it before any warning. Boo! Here we see Bulletproof PMC. Boo! The absolute heels Boo! going into this match. Sir Gail K of and former world champion of the world championship holder, uh, Ken Nakano. Yeah, these what two a look... abysmal match these two put on last night. <laughs> but they got the win, and that's what matters for Show of the Masters. These will, if the Bulletproof PMC pull out a win here, this will be the first doubles division title the two of them have picked up despite being pretty high ranked in their tenure as a tag team in the FLPW. Absolutely. Uh, these two uh, showing a lot of dominance in the previous match. Uh, you know, uh, these two were just like, under like they, they, they were dominating and they were just holding on for so long that endurance uh, uh still completely untested here are the doubles belts they're on the line here v nation looking for their third bulletproof pmc looking for their first there's the belt and it's tom man starting for v nation on the left sergey lk of starting for bulletproof on the right and already a hurricane rana from the high flying tom man Absolutely, Tom Mann uh, getting back into action with uh, Alicia Workin, uh, Workin Man against uh, Chibs Fofana and Peter Collins. Uh, this man is uh, plenty plenty prepared to take on this match. He's ready to go at it, but Sergey Alkaev uh, treating him just like he would any opponent, uh, not willing to let up a instant. Sergey Alkaev in control here. Getting thrown to the ropes. Oh, big chop block there. And once again, that's just the smarts there. If you're going to take out something on Tom Man, it's definitely those agile legs there that allow him to do all those high-flying maneuvers and grapples. And if you take that away from him, Tom Man, although a great competitor, known as a bit of a one-trick pony when it comes to offense, and if you're able to sap the energy out of his legs, he doesn't have too much left. And you're about to see why here in a moment. Huge crossbody. Ooh, big crossbody. Of course, uh, we all know Tom Man is very capable within V Nation, but uh, it should be no surprise to anybody that he is the weak link of the stable. Uh, he he is uh, sort of second fiddle to the likes of Jake Rapture and El Coogs. Uh, definitely something to prove in this match, uh, and and he hope he hopes that he can make a bit of a difference here against Sergey Alkaev. Yeah, but two violins is a duet, and three is perfect harmony. Even if he is the weakest link, he has defended the doubles championships numerous times and is instrumental to the faction success. But right now, he's succumbing to a lot of offense here from Sergey Alkaev. Absolutely. It should only speak to V-Nation's strength that the weak link is able to put on such a performance already against Sergey Alkaev. And already a pin attempt. Will this be it for the doubles championships? Oh, -ho! not looking good for Tom Mann. Cutting it a little close is Tom Mann against Sergey Alkaev. That was a very near, uh, near fall. And now we see Sergey tagging in Ken Nakano. Former world champ stepping in and Tom Mann is right on him with that backflip side slam. Wasting no time. Jake Rapture reaching for the tag, and he, he gets, gets it. it. I want to take a moment to thank Health Insurance in chat for gifting five community subs. Holy crap. Thank you so much for supporting the stream and showing your love for FLPW here tonight at Show of the Masters 2021. Really, really appreciate it. Enjoy your emotes, everybody, as Rapture's in control here in this matchup. Yeah, my co-commentator uh, here, Kano. Alex, now being able to use my range of uh, prank emotes. I'm sure he'll be happy about that. Right, Kano now dominant. Yeah, back, he's back on the match. Sorry. Always thankful for our donors. Huge Ooh. back suplex into a side slam style maneuver. Big offense here from the former world champion. That's right, Ken Nakano putting up ahead of steam. Some elbows to the back of the head. Repeated Ken elbows by Ken Nakano. Massive chop from Jake Rapture. And they're in V Nation territory now. Big front slam there. This man is a former world champion of the world, and Jake Rapture is going toe to toe against him. Now, this isn't a singles belt, though. This is tag team wrestling. This is V Nation's day in, day out, nine to five work hours here. 
Tom Mann back in the ring against Ken Nakano. Big boot to the oh! face. Super kick. Tom Mann in control in a big way here for the V Nation. Fighting out of it. Ken Nakano turning it around. Ooh! What a punch. Going for a pin attempt here, probably dragging away from the ropes for the championships. Kind of, a, kind of an early pin attempt, if you ask me. And as you can see, uh, Tom Man proving it, a kick out of two there. And there we go, tagging back out. It's the light heavyweights going at it here. Here comes Sergey. Yeah, Sergey, although classified as a light heavyweight, he is basically two pounds over being a cruiserweight, whereas Tom Man is a cruiserweight. Pretty interesting matchup here. And Sergey going one on one with the leader here. Big combo oh. there with that front drop kick. Ending with the drop kick, Sergey Alkev just brutalizing the back and uh, sides of Jake Rapture. A side and we have a leg lock, lock. Or ankle lock of some sort. Jake Rapture gets underneath the ropes. Ref breaks up the hold. Big elbow there. Back Jake elbow Rapture reversal. Can't maintain control though. Sets Jake Rapture up on the top rope. What does Sergey have planned? Tree of Woe. We're going for a foot choke here. Classic bulletproof PMC here. Not as classic as top rope superplexes, though. Which we might see a couple of this move. Big mat slam. Ooh. I'm going for a pin here on One, the leader. Two. Almost uh, a three. Not quite. That was a 2.6. Jake six. Rapture getting way too close to the cliff there. As it were, flatliner there by Jake Rapture. The what are we gonna see going... from Jake Rapture to turn this around against Sergey? Yeah, crowd going crazy right now for V Nation. Sergey's like... on the outside. Jake Rapture's planning something, but isn't able to get it off in time as Sergey fights out. Nice back hip toss there, classic bulletproof move there. Wrenching the neck of Jake. Major pressure being put on the neck of Jake Rapture there. Now moving to the arms. What are we going to see from Sergey? He has something planned. Oh, ho, 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 big super kick. Super kick. Doesn't get any more cut and dry than that. A devastating kick. Tom Man still not making One, the save, though. Two. Oh, just two. Only a two count. Jake Rapture and Sergey going at it here. Oh, pull back oh. forearm. Oh, what a maneuver there. Jake Rapture's not in a good way as he's thrown to the corner. Could we see some bulletproof offense? No, Jake Rapture reverses. Getting out of bulletproof country. An arm drag there. Very nice. That could have been disaster if Sergey and Ken set up something. But Sergey getting out of their corner as well. Spine buster. Power bomb. Nice spine buster there. Classic double A spine buster there, getting nice and low, sickening angle, pan attempt here, Tom Man breaking Tom it up Tom Man though. trying to break it up, he Look, does. Looks like we're getting to the point now where our tag team partners are getting worried for their partner's ability to kick out. Tom Man now looking out for Jake Rapture. We could be nearing the end of this contest for the doubles division championship. Suplex! Nice rebound suplex there, German suplex finding its mark. Jake Rapture is not in a good way right now. Elkuth grabbing the step, grabbing the steps there. I guess it's just a big man thing. Oh, vicious be. stomp! She grabs your breaking out of uh, Circus offense. Back suplex there into a pin attempt. Ken Nakano's One, none too worried though. Two, two, two count. Some grappling against Sergey Alkaev here. Throws him down. Tom Man gets tagged back in. There you go, and a worthwhile tag there for Jake Rapture, who got worked over by both members of Bulletproof PMC. Tom Man, a bit more stamina left in the tank, looking for some big offense here. Nice Japanese arm drag. And going for some top rope offense. 
So we're gonna try uh, to get up. Oh, yeah, Tom thinks spots about it. it. Smart, smart. Don't take any too high risks. You know what's on the line here. Russian leg sweep. Russian leg sweep. Sergey showing how they do it in Soviet Russia. Soviet Russia hasn't existed for maybe like 20 or so years. There you go, big bright punch there, and Tom Man with a leaping DDT. And there one, might be one, two. two. Oh, Kenda Kano kicking out. Gonna take a little bit more than that for Tom Man to turn this match, match in B Nation's favor. Spine buster Ooh. there by the former world champ. And that might be a pin. What? Two. Oh, 2.1. Not quite. Ken Akano, uh just barely back into this ring, already getting some uh, very close pins. And the momentum has shifted from Tom Man to Ken Nakano. Russian leg sweep. Yet another Russian leg sweep. Bulletproof PMC working in tandem here. We've got Dragon Sleeper. It's a classic maneuver from Ken Nakano. And Jake Rapture looking to break up the hold here. But Sergey... Sergey oh, okay, interfering. Tom, Tom man, man reversing. Ken Nakano in the corner here. Tom Man with his wrist lock, Hurricane Rana, classic Tom Man here. And he gets it, the Hurricane Rana from Tom Man. We might see some dual offense here. And there we go. And the V-Plex! V-Plex by it. Tom Man and Jake Rapture. But Sergey is coming in to break up the pit. Where's Tom Man? He went out of the ring. Unfortunately, not enough. We saw all four members of both tag teams in the ring together now. What a strike by Jake Rapture. Sergey just flying. Oh my lord, that man is dead. And it's all V Nation here against the defenseless. Ken Nakano DDT on the floor. Getting a lot of damage in. Referees counting them out, though. I think V-Nation is just trying to do as much as they possibly can before they have to get back into the ring here. And Ken slips back in. Jake Rapture seconds behind him. Reverse, oh, inverted neck breaker there. Taken out. Sir Gail Kev advancing on Jake Rapture. Jake Rapture desperately trying to get a tag here. A flatliner into the second turnbuckle. Oh, right into the turnbuckle. That's going to sting. Right in the turning buckle. Looks like Sergey Okayev is taking Jake Rapture on a world tour, but oh, he no, wants kick. nothing about it. Crowd going wild. There's the Rapture. Ooh, the Rapture Big from Jake move, Rapture. Will that be going enough? To the block. Two. No. Oh, he kicked out by himself. The Tom Man still getting a side suplex. V Nation. Momentum shifting in their favor against the Bulletproof PMC. The crowd going crazy as Jake Rapture continuing to work on Sergey Alkaev. But what is Jake looking for here? There it is. There's the Rapture. I'm sorry, everybody. This called the flipping neckbreaker. Now Tom Man looking for the block again. Oh, he kick does. Out. A kick out. But he kicked out just a bear. Bare minimum kick out by Sergey Alkaev, even with Tom Man's interference, able to stop Ken Nakano. Sergey Alkaev getting out of that by himself. So many close near falls here. The referee trying to get some order established back here as Jake Rapture's face meets the turnbuckle once more. Sergey's in bulletproof territory here, but once again, really loving these flatliners here, getting a lot of mileage out of that move. If he uses That's it the too third much, though. time in such a short amount of of, of action perhaps that Jake buying, Rapture's face is perhaps has buying me, time. Has the... oh. 
Got it in the what top does Sergey Okay have, have planned here? We've seen them use a lot of these moves to slowly wear down the Flying Dutchman on Superplex. We see a pin attempt here, perhaps? Sergey Not playing quite. with his prey. Oh, oh, he's opened up. Rapture's bleeding. Sergey Okay have tagging in Ken Nakano once more. Yeah, we definitely see the Bulletproof PMC love to play with their food. Even with Championship on the line here in this matchup, they just can't help but to gloat and play with their prey, as it were. The V Nation's here to win. But so is Bulletproof. We're going to um, the top rope. Ken Nakano and Sergey uh very ruthless, as demonstrated by their just... Uh, fearlessness in 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 messing with the likes of jake rapture and tom Mann, but they are still very much out here for a doubles title the bulletproof pmc love getting them into the corners for these big offense once again just these high impact maneuvers they once they've got you dizzy and they can manipulate you but jake rapture fighting out of it big diving shoulder block and the crowd's going wild. Jake Rapture tagging back in Tom Man. Sir Gail Kev on the edge here. Oh, a backflip by Tom Man, just showing off. You have to stop Ken Nakano from getting that tag. Looks like he does. Oh my goodness, what is happening here? Lots of clotheslines. Sue's thrust kick there. The side of the head, big moves there by Tom Man. Oh, standing shooting star splash there. That could be it. Jake Rapture going for the attempt One, here. He's got the Thespis. Two, and three. No! Doubles division tag team tournaments. The V Nation make it number three. Tom Mann, no longer the third wheel. The one to get the pen for V Nation's third doubles division championship. The Nation will be your FLPW dub Doubles Division Champions leading in to the 2K19 era. Well-deserved win by V Nation. And we just love to see back here the the, uh, the commentary table, the, the Bulletproof PMC getting exactly what they deserved in the finish for this match. Yeah, and what an ending there. The Bulletproof PMC love toying with their prey on the corners. They love dizzying them and wearing them down with high impact maneuvers, back superplexes, regular superplexes from the top rope. But Jake Rapture had that well scouted, that flying shoulder block, opening everything up for that tag for Tom Mann and that standing shooting Star press being enough to smother their opponent for the win here. Great heads up wrestling, and that is why V Nation is one of the greatest tag teams in all the FLPW. They've been on top, and ladies and gentlemen, they are staying on top into the new era. Look at that height on Ken Nakano. Tom Mann can now put on his resume that he pinned a former world champion. Jake Rapture also instrumental getting that Fez press on Sergey Elkayev. And now the three of them are celebrating in the ring. Utter domination by V Nation. Uh, once again, demonstrated as they're holding the doubles division belts. Uh, get a good look because this is the last time you will see this design of the doubles division uh, championship belt before uh, we have a redesign. Yeah, all the belts and championships are getting a redesign. Although we do have a mock-up of the new world's bestest championship of the world made up for you tonight. However, the American doubles and Canadian championships on the line tonight, those are the last time you'll see these designs. So these will be remembered as the true 2K16 doubles division champions. What a match we just saw. But, oh, we have a barn burner coming up for you next. Our penultimate championship match of the evening. We'll have six men in the U.S. division of FLPW. Uh... Or, or, or five men and one woman, excuse me, uh, go up against each other to claim that U.S. championship. We will have Sax Seamus, Thomas Warren of the Missouri Boys, Tyler T-Man, uh, Maximilian Wolf, Sarah Daystar, and Cousin Trent, all of them going against each other. First pin wins, and it will be a ladder match, adding additional suspense and intrigue for this championship belt. What a match this will turn out to be. So exciting. Yeah, and this really is show of the masters and the goal of this 
stream has not only been to facilitate the ending of the week-long tournament and crowning a new world's bestest champion of the world going into the new era, but I also wanted to tie a bow on everything that's shined in our time in 2K16, and these six individuals have been chosen, not only because they're not working tonight, but also because they really are the best the US division has to offer. And so many talented wrestlers are going into this with chances to win. Tyler's Straight Savage team and Thomas Warren, Maximilian Wolf, Cousin Trent, and Sarah Daystar, and Zach Seamus. The six of them alone, even just a group of them, could just host a wrestling show with only the six of them and I'd be gripped for every single match they were to put on. Any combination, any night, any stipulation, I'd watch it. Absolutely, and, and we will see all six of these heavyweights in the U.S. division uh, fight until one of them becomes the national U.S. champion to enter the 2K19 era. Right, so this is annoying. The game is not allowing me to set the ladder match up for a title, so whatever. The, imagine the title is a briefcase. You can use suspension of disbelief. We're commentating a video game for anyways. <laughs> that won't that won't happen in 2K19, I'll tell you that much. Okay, enough pulling back the curtain here. We have this is going to be a great match, whether they're reaching for the net, the national US championship or a facsimile thereof. But point is winner of this will be the new American champion of America. We're getting this match loaded up for you here. This is just the remaining three matches left. The belt is in the briefcase there for safekeeping. Yeah, good. Yes, that's it. You got it. And you couldn't let the. Oh, El Saximus entering the ring now. The Argentine dream. The Argentine dream. dream. Saximus did amazingly in the tournament this week where he bested Johnny Talladega before eventually losing to Salty Marcellus. It was tournament winner versus tournament winner, and Salty is fighting for the world's best championship of the world, so I guess no better person to lose to in that regard. Yes, but Saxim is still a very dominant wrestler, and maybe he could show it tonight as he goes after that briefcase containing the American championship belt. Right, we have a lot of entrances to get through six individuals. If you thought our free-for-all match earlier for the Canadian title was going to be something, this is this is going to be hard to commentate. Thomas Warren, this is the man that put the U.S. division on the map with his unforgettable bouts with Maximilian Wolf and Cousin Trent when FOPW debuted in 2016, having some of the most memorable matches of the era. Very sad that he wasn't able to show his stuff in the tournament, getting eliminated round one by, I believe it was Jacob Drummond. I could be wrong though. My memory could be failing me. I do not have the bracket in front of me. The point is, he's very talented. He's a former U.S. champion, and he's looking to turn it into number two here tonight. Absolutely. Thomas Warren actually eliminated by Ultra Star Adams Thank on the you. way to this. Which, if you saw Ultra Star Adams perform earlier in our gigantic opening match, it took everything Salty Marcellus had to put him over, put him down. And Sarah Daystar, here she comes. We haven't seen Sarah Daystar uh, since uh, that tag team match with Adam Rogovine where she lost her position. Uh, just just a brutal loss against the team of Father Briggs and Hunter Hardgold. But Hunter Hardgold, another, uh, uh, the, another uh, entrant in the finals match for tonight, uh, probably foretold by that loss. She also has something to prove. She also wants that American championship uh Truly in a, in a suspenseful uh, setup for Sarah Daystar leading into this match. Now, this is a very interesting matchup. I did say that uh, Sa or Thomas Warren, Tyler T Man, and, or sorry, Thomas Warren, Maximilian Wolf, and uh, Trent McRae made the U.S. division what it was. But Sarah Daystar, Marcus Gravy, Saxemus, and Tyler T Man would go on to define the the division in its latter half of the FOPW's life in 2017, so it's really going to be a past greats versus I guess less past greats at this point, but you, you get what I'm saying. It's a fusion of... Absolutely. It's a fusion of uh, eras in the U.S. division here in this latter match. And we, here we see Maximilian Wolf making his entrance. 
Again, another unfortunate display. He didn't even qualify for the tournament. Another huge shocking upset. Maximilian Wolf losing out to... Uh, who was it? Was it... No, it wasn't Milbro. Oh, no. I really wish I had notes for this. Maximilian Wolf losing to... Uh, I believe El Saximus on the way here. Well, Saximus qualified for no, the tournament. No, sorry. El Coogs. El Coogs. Oh, El... No. There we go. El Coogs also made it into the tournament. Oh, oh he was in round no, one. No, he okay. lost. Got, he gotcha. lost to yeah, El Coogs. Coogs. Okay, sorry. I have no notes... And I'm being shown up by my commentator here, so thank you so much for bailing me out of that tangent. No problem. You've bailed me out in the past, so I have to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> yeah, Al Coog's an amazing run to the tournament, getting to the quarterfinals against Jordan Wasink before being cheated out. Or not quarterfinal, that was day two. The quarterfinals was Jordan losing out to Salty Marcellus. But yeah, Maximilian Wolf getting his licks in, looking to become a first-time U.S. champion. He's had numerous bouts for the title, most notably again against Thomas Warren, but still hasn't been able to take one home. And entering the ring next, somebody I forgot to switch the Titantron for, but it is straight savage Tyler T-Man looking for his first United States Championship. Tyler T-Man did amazing in this tournament, but unfortunately losing out in day two to Hunter Hardgold. But he's looking for a mighty fine consolation prize. Absolutely. Uh, an unfortunate breakup of the Beast crew between Trevor Warren and Tyler T-Man at the beginning of this tournament. Uh, Tyler T-Man now in singles territory. Uh, he will demonstrate that he's willing to be in the picture for the title uh, whether that's uh, a win for this championship tonight or even a strong performance, Tyler T. Man uh, coming into this match wanting very much to show that he should not be counted out. I still love that no more tears shirt he has. That, that finishing move that's won so many singles matches for him when he was vying for the U.S. title in 2017 when he was still part of the Beast crew. But like you said, they've amicably split up Trevor and him looking for solely dedicating themselves to singles action. And here, I believe, is the last participant, Trent McRae, who did wonderfully against Kevin Knight in the September 17th preliminaries to get into the tournament. But unfortunately losing out to, I believe it was Erica Heyman. Uh, that's correct. Uh, Erica Heyman defeating Trent McRae even after he got that placement. Um, Trent McRae uh, uh, not, just just getting a really impressive uh, early victory uh, to qualify uh, unfortunately against Erica who eventually made it all the way to the uh, to the uh, quarterfinals, I believe. Yes. Uh, just just uh, not enough um, Cousin Trent uh, hoping to uh, roll it back here for this championship match. And there we go. That's all six in the ring. This is going to be a dog's breakfast for the U.S. championship that's been put into a briefcase above the ring, and it's already bodies flying everywhere. Wrestlers wasting no time here. The ones standing are uh, Thomas Warren, El Saximus, uh, we have uh, Tyler T-Man getting thrown over there. Uh, Sarah Daystar and uh, Trent McRae are going at it. Saxime is jumping on the outside. In the oh. ring right now, we have Sarah Daystar and Thomas Warren dominating. Yeah, a classic matchup here between Thomas and, Hart and, uh, and Maximilian Wolf here. Old school rivalry here. Trent McRae Maxwell and Sarah Daystar. bumping into Trent McRae there. Tyler T-Man and Saxime those two have also had a very storied rivalry, Saximus and Tyler T-Man going to that infamous 45-minute match oh. that ended in a timeout. Tyler T-Man just spearing Saximus with that with that uh, ladder there. Yeah, there's no rules in this matchup. You just no disqualification. Just get a ladder in the middle of the ring and climb up to the briefcase. And Tyler T-Man getting knocked by Saximus there with a the ladder. Now we have a ladder in the ring. The stage has been set. Now of the participants in this match, there are only two of them with previous ladder match experience. The first would be Trent McRae. And in 2016 at Show of the Masters, there was a ladder match for a so-called master contract. And Trent McRae won that. 
Also in the alumni of ladder matches in here, Maximilian Wolf won a ladder match against Lane Whitaker for a rematch against Lane's tag team partner there who's currently beating up Wolf on ringside here, Thomas Warren. So we have two previous ladder match winners here participating. These wrestlers are fighting a lot on the outside, but you can't let that distract you from the main goal of this match, and that is to get a ladder open in the center of the ring, climb to the top of it, and grab that briefcase containing the championship belt. Who will be able to do that first? <laughs> that ladder being tossed. Oh. McRae throwing Daystar onto the barricade there, just dealing some punishment. And Saxemoth with a spike on D-Man. What a spike by Saxemus. T-Man uh, winded there. Now Saxemus working on his arm. Tremic Ray standing over Sarah Daystar in the center. Seeing well, Trevor over. Warren and Max Wolf just trading places there. And th now they're back in the ring. We have all six wrestlers back in the ring now. Yeah, very crowded place. Saxemus knocks out Tyler T-Man yet again. He's not quite done on the outside with him. Oh, maybe he is. Maybe he's taking this opportunity to grab the ladder. Thomas Warren on his third German suplex in a row on Wolf. Trent McCray continuing to work on Sarah Daystar and T-Man. T-Man getting a drop kick. T-Man in control of his bout against Saxemus. Sarah Daystar and Trent McCray still going at it. We are seeing an all-out brawl happen here in the center of this ring. Yeah, a dog's breakfast for sure, as my father would say. Yet again, uh, Saxemus knocking out Tyler T-Man. Maximum Wolf looking for some high-risk offense here. Big senton! Ooh. The connection of his pelvis, the full weight of Maximilian Wolf's body hitting the back of Trevor uh, Thomas Warren there. Oh, fist drop there. Saximus beating up Tyler T. Man, Sarah Daystar finally in control of her bout against Trent McRae. When will these wrestlers remember that there's a ladder there to climb? Uh, how much punishment is necessary before there's going to be an attempt for that briefcase? Saximus okay. eyeing uh, Maximilian Wolf now. Trevor Warren oh. backing into Saxemus. Oh, he's grabbing the ladder. <laughs> Just bean Saxemus in the face with it. We will we will probably uh oh no, he's not quite getting up on the no, ladder. He's looking first. for the he's OHK. There it is, the OHK and... on Saxemus. OHK, that is taking care of Saxemus. Oh, but he's not quite finished. Cousin Trent getting an opportunity here. Throws the ladder out. We only need one ladder in the ring for this match. Trevor Warren now setting it up. Thomas Warren now setting up. Excuse me. Yeah, having two Warrens in the FLPW is a little bit confusing, I will admit. But Just Thomas... slinging that against anybody who dares to come near him. But now Tr uh, Cousin Trent has... <laughs> puts the kibosh on that. Oh! Right in the lead. It looks misses. like he rolled out of the way. Oh, into a face breaker. And Thomas that ladder Warren is set up for something. Trent. Cousin, Cousin Trent and Thomas Warren now fighting over that uh, over that ladder, it seems. Yeah, we've had a bit of a switch up from who's fighting who. T-Man is giving an arm bar to Sarah Daystar. Saxemus is working over Maximilian Wolf now on the left side of your screen. We just see uh, Cousin Trent get tossed over by Thomas Warren, but he's not quite done. Oh, maybe he is. And Thomas Warren a little alone here. Saxemus indisposed with dealing with Wolf and the ladder is set up and ready to go for that. That's the ladder case. right in the center. Thomas Warren's. Oh, no, not quite. He, nope. Oh, maybe. No, okay, he's decided. He had to get it just right. Now he's going up for that briefcase, but Cousin Trent knocks him down. There we go. The ladder Who has else been is going set to try up? and climb this ladder. We're going to see some individuals look for some sneaky climbs here. And oh, what a clothesline. Saxemus taking it down. <laughs> And knocks uh, Tyler T-Man T-Man in the face with it. We have cousin Trent, uh, Thomas Warren, and Sarah Daystar on the outside. 
Saxony was jumping off to join him. Now it's just Max Wolf and Cousin Trent in the inside. And Maximilian Wolf with maximum impact almost oh! onto the ladder. Almost against the ladder. We're seeing finishers he's not all quite over done the place with Cousin here. Trent here. Ladder getting out of there. They start with a powerful, powerful elbow. Are we going to see a butterfly suplex from Maximilian? Oh, sorry, Wolf? that was Tyler T. Man that uh, Max Wolf is going against. Butterfly suplex classic. Oh, no, just a regular superplex. No, under the ladder, Sarah Daystar Ooh. goes. That was vicious looking. That's got to hurt. Sarah Daystar taking a massive blow there. Now Saxim is trying to get another ladder back in the ring. Oh, he knows he's right going to use it as a weapon first. Maybe not. He's decided <laughs> against it. Just going to put it in the ring now. He can't decide. He's wheeling the control he stick. Having some issues. <laughs> Trying to decide what to do with that ladder. No, that's not the button. No. Having no. some trouble. No, he's giving up. I would too. Don't he's worry, giving buddy. up. Game is hard. Maximilian Wolf in the ring. And some stairs being used. Once again, it's Trent and Staystar on the top right of your screen. Wolf and T-Man are going at it with Saximus delivering a leg drop to Thomas Warren there in the bottom left. We're going to see Saximus. Oh, he's not going to have another go at this ladder. Maybe he'll go for the other one instead. Yes, he is. And there he goes, he figures it out. You just needed to work from the side that time. Very different strategy working in from the side than the front. Yeah, inverted control. Throws over suck, uh, right? Thomas Warren there. Max Wolf behind him taking on Tyler T Man. Tyler T Man! Throws oh, over. Oh, 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 right on the Lordy. Right on the stairs. That's gotta leave a mark. And Sarah, Sarah Daystar, Daystar is now alone. by herself. Sarah Daystar is alone. Setting up All the ladder. All the other wrestlers distracted. I think she's Thomas Warren is it. starting to see. She's getting. She's going for it. She, nobody's going to stop her. Trent sees her. Trent, Trent continued. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Trent prevents Day, it. Jay that Star, was so close. Daystar almost walked away with the championship there. We almost could have seen a new U.S. champion. And see, uh, Sarah Daystar and Thomas Warren uh, fighting over the. Uh, their place on the ladder, giving Cousin Trent uh, some initiative here. Now, because Trent is by himself ring. in the middle. Trent's cleared the ring. Nobody's there to and stop. And he's going Trent. for that ladder. And he's got it. He's got it. Cousin Trent is your new national U.S. champion of America. What a ladder match that was. And that ladder match expertise coming up. Trent McRae makes it two in a row, even though there's been like five years between the two of them. But hey, another ladder match victory. Trent is your new national U.S. champion of America going into the 2K19 era. What an impressive showing by cousin Trent. He had a very early uh, loss in round one of this tournament but able to turn it around and come in clutch for that championship match. Got to hand it to him. There we go. Absolutely elated there in that six-man match. It's been a wonderful night, but we're just two matches away from the closure of Show of the Masters 2017, which is the end 2021. of 2021. Did I say 2017? Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Yes, you did. Uh, that's what I mean by end of an era. I did a lot of these streams. and For those of you who don't know the history of FLPW, I bought... WWE 2K16 when it came out in late 2015 and I just went to work creating a bunch of people and I thought hey wouldn't it be fun just to like you know fake commentate these matches for people who care about it and that sort of spun into a whole thing before I know it I was staying up until 4 a.m. designing logos and all these wrestler graphics and stuff for the 2016 season starting with the August 8th tournament and August 8th sort of turning into a banner day for the FLPW since then as a sort of its birthday and usually we commemorate that with a tournament but since i was a bit late this year getting to it we've had the tournament on this week and ever since then these characters have sort of evolved into personalities of their own some based on very very good friends of mine saximus being a lethal league friend from far thomas warren another great friend of mine Tyler t man in the chat right now maximilian wolf based on sea wolf 2012 another excellent lethal league veteran that i got along great with Cousin Trent, an amazing DJ talent. If you're not aware of Cousin, uh, if you're not aware of Trent McRae, you should definitely follow him on Twitter, although he changes his 
username like every week, so I don't know what his current handle is off by heart. But he does amazing Friday night DJ streams. I believe he's doing one this week, so please check it out. It's excellent music. If you're into Chicago house and rap hip hop and all that stuff, it's so good. He's so good at mixing the two together. But that's sort of what the Apple BW has been about. That's my phone. I don't know who's calling me this late, but that's fine. But the point is, it's just, you know, faffing about, I guess. But ev Alex here and helping me out, making this the best it's ever been over this past week. These matches, apart from one or two sore thumbs, have been the best the FLPW has ever been. And it's all thanks to you and everyone else who's been helping me out make these streams. I just want to give a huge thank you to you. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the love goes right back to you. You are putting in some real time hours for these matches to, to be realized. Um, and FLPW would not exist if you hadn't conceived of it. So um, definitely putting in a lot of work on your end. Uh, that stuff is definitely worth uh, attention as well. All right, we have two big matches left to go. Not only do we have the world's bestest championship of the world championship match coming up, but we have a feud to settle in the meantime. And wow, are these two individuals angry. This has been brewing before the tournament proper, before round one got started. Michael Saxton uh, losing his round one match because of Big Helton's backstage interference cheating him out of a victory the way that Vic Helton was cheated out of a three count in their qualifier match. This will settle a blood feud between the two big men. Uh, we've been waiting for this match for quite some time. This was the first match of Show of the Masters to be announced. A heavyweight matchup between Michael Saxton, who is entering the ring right now, and Big Helton. Now, I was talking to Michael Saxton, and he gave a very passionate speech to me, and originally he was furious that Big Helton interrupted his match and uh, prevented him from getting a championship opportunity, but he told me that he is a different kind of mad now. He knows that if he puts his mind to it in the future, that title opportunities will come, but right now, his sole focus is removing the thorn from his side that is Big Helton, and he is going to get all all of them tonight, putting them down for the three count in this falls count anywhere match. No disqualifications, no rules. Inside or outside the ring, a pin or submission can happen in this a feud ender of a match. That's right. Michael Saxon and Big Helton invited to do whatever they need to do to take down their opponent. You can get a fall anywhere you want, and you can use whatever weapons you want. These two are willing to go at it tonight, and now we are going to see Big Helton make his entrance. There he is, Big Helton, the man who orchestrated this, the man who started this feud, as it were, feeling cheated out of that three count, as you said earlier in his September 17th preliminary match against Michael Saxton. He took matters into his own hands, and that has resulted in this match up tonight. Definitely a hoss fight, and... It was a super close matchup between the two of them in their preliminary match, and with nothing standing in their way to deal harm to one another, one can only imagine how this will turn out. Absolutely. Big Helton deciding to blame Michael Saxton for that loss that he took against him rather than the referee. Uh, his eyes laser-focused on Michael Saxton, um, wanting to just punish him for that incident and, and make it known how much he despises Saxton, uh, we are going to see quite a finish to this match, I am sure. Michael Saxton, Big Helton, and there's the bell falls count anywhere. Ref only really staying in here as a formality to get that three count. Anything else the rest, uh, wrestlers do here will be allowed. Oh, a clean Except break. apparently that... I don't know why the ref referee is separating this. Uh, this is a no DQ match. And Big Helton getting some early offense in here. Big slam early on by Big Helton. Suplex. Already he's know. going under the ring for some uh, gobbins. And Michael Saxton doing the same. Choose your weapon. Helton's got a chair. What is Saxton choosing? A ladder! Throws the chair down. Saxon has a ladder. We literally just put those ladders away, and he's getting them back out. Oh, missing a hand. Oh, and he's going to get the oh. ladder. Beans Helton in the face. Chops him in the leg, but he rolls out. 
Yeah, Sexton was perhaps able to connect there. Sexton perhaps feeling inspired from what he saw last match. He was like, oh man, that ladder right there, that seems like a good weapon. I'll just do that. It's, it's oh, very big. elbow drop there. One of those memorable Jackie Chan fights of all time has been with a ladder. <laughs> yep, very big, very heavy. Uh, that's just direct steel. I'm getting another weapon. What's he got? He's got a baseball bat. Helton wrestling it away from him. Now Helton's got the bat. There's a ref right between him and Saxton. You better avoid getting oh, a shot from that bat. It's a gimme, oh, gimme, gimme. Who's going to get the shot out first? Who's... They just keep trading this bat. First it's Saxton, then it's Helton, then it's Saxton. Oh, oh! Dong! What an impact. Big Helton's light's getting knocked out. Now he has the bat back. He's throwing it away, though. Big German suplex Ooh. to the outside. He doesn't even need the bat to take that German suplex. And the first pin attempt of the match... One, two, and two count. Only a two count. Very spirited introduction to this bout between these two heavyweights. Nice grab there by Saxton. An incoming strike from Helton, but Helton with a big boot there. Belly to belly suplex crashing into the mat there. Saxon, Saxon now a little bit winded. No, he was talking some shit there, I believe. Going for the pin attempt, but Helton kicks Only out. Only a two count yet again. Kick to the back of uh, uh, Helton there by Saxton. Oh, big right hands and Helton fighting out of it. Wailing on him even. He's got a suplex ready. Oh, big suplex. Legs crashing against the steel steps, and Saxton is looking to get this back into the... What is he thinking? He's looking for something on the second rope, but doesn't quite think it over. Perhaps. I guess he uh, was imagining that Saxton... I'm sorry, Helton will be back in the ring by now, but uh, Helton still barely getting on to, up to his feet. And he's grabbing uh, the arguably stairs. Arguably a miscalculation by Saxton, giving Helton a lot of time to recuperate. Up and over. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's the sound that made. Takes it like a champ. <laughs> Not even flinching. I wish you heard okay, the sound that, that one made. Ended. Oh my lord, that was just a dong as he just like no something. Oh my god, Helton with his favorite weapon in the whole wide world going crazy on Saxton. Trying to figure out where to put these steps down. Oh hey, oh, it's the back of it. Michael Saxton. Oh, right to the oh. E. Well, he's just using the stairs over and over again, but Saxton fighting Spiking out of it. it. Again and again. Getting the stairs Wrenches out of his hand, and Saxton's away. turn. No, Helton. These are my stairs. These are my stairs. Helton not wanting Saxton to take away his favorite toy. <laughs> he loves it so much, he, loves it. he just puts it anywhere. He's just picking it up and dropping it. He seems to be enjoying that very much. Well, but no, now he has to get this pin. One, Celebration two, for the pin, but that's not it. I think uh, Helton was getting a little bit too involved with those steps to to get a, a early enough pin on Saxton there. Now you said earlier Chumbo might have a stair fetish. I hope you've changed your mind now that you've seen this nonsense. <laughs> a big I absolutely agree. That backbreaker going for the pin attempt. One, two, just a two count. Only a two count. On the look back in control here. Big backbreaker by Big Helton. Another backbreaker here trying to take the lifting ability out of Saximus. Ooh, caught the leg. Saxton. Or Saxton, sorry. And whoa, look at this. Look at this lock. It's got the leg Very around the neck. Interesting hold here by Saxton. Very inventive. Innovative offense oh. there by Saxton. Helton getting out of it, but Saxton laying on with the punches, not willing to waste any time. Huge power, power bomb. bomb. Oh my goodness, he bounced. Saxton going for Michael four. Saxton now. Suplex. That's one suplex. That's a second suplex. Another suplex. Make it triple. 
Those chaining German suplexes, one of Michael Saxton's signature maneuvers. One, two. No, that's a kick oh, out. Not quite. The stairs still in the ring waiting to be used. Helton in control. Big oh, clothesline. What a clothesline from Helton. Going for a pin attempt. One, two. It's just a two count. Just a two count. Michael Saxton still in this. Oh, drop toe hold and Saxton is oh. opened up. I believe that was Saxton's head uh, rubbing against the edge of those steps for that uh, injury there. And that Saxton could be it. Saxton bleeding from the face to... No, barely. Not quite. Saxton still plenty of energy left. He needs to be able to get up and turn this around before it becomes too late. Elton very much the one in control here. wrench on really locking it in Saxton in control fireman's carry Saxton maybe looking for the fast exit but Helton with a reverse DDT well scouted there and Helton is looking for some kind of maneuver here what's he looking for oh, he's looking for the tombstone and there it is, the silencer. Tombstone pile driver. The silencer. No rope breaks One, in this no DQ two, matchup. And there three. we go. Big Helton takes the win. Big Helton getting revenge on Michael Saxton. Exactly what he wanted this entire time. Did not want Michael Saxton to get away free when he got that tournament position. Uh, and making it known that he is the dominant wrestler. Uh, Michael Saxton just... Uh, almost able to turn that around a few times but um once you saw that head injury uh you knew that it was uh, on, he was on the edge of, of of defeat there and big helton just barely able to push him over the edge there now helton doing his stare haka here as he's about to pin saxton this was quite a humorous moment sort of rubbing Absolutely. it in there i think he's just running circles around saxton for most of this match big helton uh really making a statement here and i think it's read loud and clear by oh, anybody in that locker room so there's the drop toehold we theorized grazed the stairs and opened up saxton but he was still able to kick out of this yes and, and it was it was that silencer that uh big helton needed just to finish things off and here you see it gearing up for it here it comes uh, you know it's coming Saxon not able to get out and screwing it on and here comes the shot there's the silencer for you a devastating move tombstone pile driver the silencer by big helton finishing it off against michael saxton what an amazing bout that was uh big helton just just showing who's the bigger man in this match uh leading into the grand final for tonight's championship yeah, match. and it's this whole week this week and a half has been building up to now. Salty an entire Marcellus. tournament. Yep. An entire tournament, 32 competitors and only two remaining. Salty Marcellus, Hunter Hardgold are two finalists. The winner of this match will hold the world's bestest champion of the world championship belt. The final match in the 2016 era of FLPW. It is all come down to this truly a historic bout heading up to our last event of the evening. Now the question is, who is in better shape? Salty Marcellus had to sell the farm in order to get his victory against Ultrastar Adams in our opening bout that lasted almost half an hour, it felt. What a match that was. And then against Hunter Hardgold, getting the golden pin on Marcus Gravy. One would, I would say that uh, Hunter Hardgold is in a much better shape than Selfie Marcellus is right now, but perhaps you could... What is? He, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, so, well, with Selfie Marcellus, you know that he has a lot of stamina. He's been able to demonstrate it time and time again against some of the biggest competitors in FLPW in the lead-up to this uh, match. 
Uh, Hunter Hargill definitely leaning very heavily on his partner, Eddie Chumbo. Uh, 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 and, uh, you know, uh, that might be the difference maker here. Uh, it's it's just hard to determine whether or not Hunter Hargold has enough um, in his in his wheelhouse to be able to take down Salty Marcellus here. Uh, we've had a truly dominant wrestler coming up against a truly dominant wrestler. Uh, it, it's it's hard to guess just who's going to be uh, on top for this match. Uh, we will just have to see. Yes, Hunter Hargold is a very rough fighting style versus a very, again, another rough fighting style in Salty Marcellus. The big question mark is how much stamina do either of these two have left for the world's bestest championship of the world bout here tonight. And the match is finally getting loaded. Sorry for the delay, everybody. Getting loaded up here. Hunter Hardwell, Salty Marcellus week and a half of build up for this. This is not only the championship on the line, but who will be the last champion of the 2K16 era. And making his way to the ring. It's Hunter Hardgold, but he's alone. Uh, apparently does not have Eddie Chubbo with him. Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, maybe an officiating decision there uh, to just keep these two in the ring by themselves. But at the same time, I think Hunter Hardgold is fully willing to uh, demonstrate how effective he is. Uh, this is a singles belt. Uh, this is a singles match. Hunter Hardgold will be a single contender in this final yes. main event. Uh, thank you. I'm finally getting word that it is because of Chumbo's interference with Gravy that the officials have decided that they want only the two participants in the grand finals at the ring area for this so Hardgold will have no backup from Chumbo against Salty Marcellus but the question is does he really need that uh, backup? Salty Marcellus took a huge beating against Altastar, more of a beating than Gravy gave to Hardgold so that's just another question being thrown into this championship match and both of, yeah, both of them fighting for their first ever championship. Now, if Salty Marcellus wins, that would put a bow tie on everything he's worked for in the FLPW in the 2K16 era. An undefeated U.S. champion vacating the belt for greener passers in the world's division, but not being able to get the same success he did than the U.S. division. Uh, losing key matches, not being able to break the surface, but now is his time he's got five years a five-year chunk of a chip on his shoulder to get off of if he's able to win this championship match as you see there psyching himself up who knows how much pain he's hiding from his earlier beating in the night your main event for the world's bestest championship of the world here at show of the masters 2021 Salty Marcellus had uh, vacated the national U.S. championship and of America. Sorry for interrupting, but there's the this. new design. That's what the belt roughly looks like in the 2K19 era. Sorry for cutting you off there, but the match is no on worries. our main event. Tie up here. Everything on the line for these two wrestlers heading into this match. Okay, what takedown there by Salty. Look at that move there by Hardgold, wrenching it with the head scissors there, really locking it in. Great maneuvers there. Yeah, both of them 4 and 0 oh so far, I believe. Hunter Hardgold's actually 5 and 0 oh if you count his preliminary match on the 17th. Repeated jabs to the body. Oh, and even an attempt to get a, a drop kick, but apparently it did not connect. So much on the line for these two. Victory after victory. Time having to prove themselves after time. Sultan Marcellus wrenching the neck of Hunter Hardgold at ringside. Unfortunately, the ref's count is very much a factor here. They only have so much time before they need to get back into the ring. Marcellus is in. Hardgold following behind. Pull back side slam there. 
a sidewalk slam of Salty Marcellus, and it's been mostly Salty Marcellus in this matchup. That's right, Hunter Harkle now at a bit of a disadvantage. He doesn't have his partner helping him like he did before. He is on his own against the beast, Salty Marcellus. Oh, nice reversal there by Hardgold, and he needs that to stay on top of things. Going for a pump handle maneuver here. Oh, that inverted backbreaker, that neck on the knee there. And we see Pumps. repeated punches to the face of Salty Marcellus. Hunter Hardgold getting some leverage back in his favor here. Hardgold's got Salty to the ring. Tree of Woe, we're going to see that choke. That choke out that Hunter's been using all tournament long to help wear out his opponents. Just another key example of that move by Hunter Hardgold against Marcellus, and now we're gonna see a first pinfall attempt. It's one, one that's two. two, two count. Only two, Hunter Hardgold has a long road ahead of him. Oh, oh just a oh. completely callous, unnecessary slap to the face of of, of, uh, of Salty Marcellus. An uppercut by Salty Marcellus against Hunter Hardgold. Now Salty Marcellus is in control. Throws Hunter Hardgold on the apron, and now he's fallen to the outside. We will see some more ringside action here. That's where Salty's love to get the fight going here for most of the matchup. Right into the... Against the barricade goes Hunter Hardgold. And a backbreaker... Stop to the gut. Beating him down, throwing his the back of his head against the mat there. Now, if you're Salty Marcellus, you have to sort of project all of your frustrations of failing to get into the world title picture onto hard gold. It, picture hard gold is everything that set you back for get your road to get to the championship title. Get that adrenaline pumping here. And Hardgold looking to finally get a gigantic exclamation point. Known as a doubles wrestler, he's been going above and beyond as a cruiserweight here in the FLPW tournaments. Marcellus not seeming to care about Hunter Hardgold as he stands before him, getting some back elbows to break out, break out of that hold. Marcellus, ooh, what a lariat, I believe. There we go, nice leg screw there. Hard gold Hunter looking Hard for gold a pin. Try to go for a pin. One, one. Two, two. Just a two count. Only a two count. Still plenty of ground to cover. Punch to the head. Big knee. Two jabs and a knee. Marcellus retaliating. Oh, try to go for his rolling forearm, but Salty counters out of it. Kicking out. A lot of reversals. This could be it. Marcellus with the he's pin now, the one. He's got the rope after one. The pin has to be broken now. Yeah, a very 180 Hardgold. from our previous no rules matchup. Unfortunately, letting go of the rope before he gets to his feet, that could cost him. Yeah, hard gold just not, just Sultan Marcel is doing a good job here keeping hard gold on his ass. We're gonna see another pin attempt, possibly. Oh no! Oh, oh a headbutt! Oh, 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 oh. A headbutt to the money zone. Enjoy the view, swinging side slam there by Salty. It's all been Salty here these past few moments. A uh, hard gold fighting out of it with a jawbreaker. Throws hard gold against the corner. What will we see from ourselves oh, now? Snake eyes into the top turnbuckle. Stomps to the chest. And we saw Salty bust that out plenty in his match against Ultra Star Adams earlier. Throws him against the corner. Uh, we see a back elbow reversal. Marcellus uh, getting blasted on his, uh, his stomach by Hard Gold. Now we're seeing a uh, submission hold. You know, really wrenching that in. He was stepping on the hand there of Salty while wrenching on the chin. The snapmare. Once again, really working on those chin locks is Hunter Hardgold. Eddie Chumbo probably watching backstage, hopeful that his 
Hardcore Union member will take home the championship to the stable. Job breaker reversal. Job Salty breaker back there. in it. Hunter Hargold throwing uh, Salty in the corner. Puts him on the top rope. What's he have planned? Oh, Avalanche victory roll. Oh. Lynching in the pin. Referee, what are you doing? One, two, oh, three. I don't two, know what the referee was yelling at. There was no one on the outside there. I think he was stuck in the animation telling Hardgold to get down. And he just wasn't in position for the pin. Some shoddy officiating there as Sultan Marcellus once again gets this octopus stretch of sorts locked in. That abdominal stretch, but he's also got the leg. Holding Hunter Hargold in position. Yeah, trying to get separation between the hips and the rib cage Ooh. there. Big strength by Hunter Hargold just lifting Salty Marcellus up and down. Throws him on the mat. Golden control, swinging neck breaker. And going for hard way. He gets it. The hard way. He gets it. For the championship, ladies and gentlemen. He needs to, he needs to get this pin attempt quickly if he wants that championship uh, belt. One, two. That's uh, a kick out. No. Wasted Only a, bit a of, two count. Wasted a bit of time. Uh, some frustration in the eyes there of hard gold. Oh, Hardgold wants this championship. He's fought too long to be denied it now. And he's looking for the golden pin. Sultan Marcellus stumbling to his feet. And he catches the leg. Big reversal there that probably changed the course of the whole match for Salty. Absolutely. And now we see those machine gun kicks yet looking... again from Sultan Marcellus. Will we see the salt shaker here? Will he, will he just skip right to the Death Valley driver, though, is my question. Yes, he will. We're not even going to see the power bombs. Just going doesn't even need the overture, just goes right for the Death Valley driver. Trying to get him away from the ropes, Salty wasting a lot of time here. Salty kicked out of the hard way. Will Hard Gold kick out of the Death Valley One, driver? Two. Yes! Yes, he does. Wasted a bit too much time there, unfortunately, did Salty. And Hard Gold and kicking Salty out. And Salty Marcellus didn't even try to get those power bombs in, those crucial power bombs, weakening the opponent for that Death Valley driver to hit its mark. Uh, decided to try and get a cheap victory here, but Hardgold <laughs> still playing of energy. What a kick! I mean, it's a a Gaman Geary there. Very smart thinking reversal there by Hardgold as he's in control. Once again, working on the chin. This has been his number one way to sap the energy out of Salty all match long. Now, Hardgold has already put to sleep one underdog story, that being Marcus Gravy earlier in the night. Is he looking to put a, or is he looking to put into slumber a second one tonight as Salty's looking to become champion? And Salty returns the favor with his neck or chin lock. Fighting Hunter out of Hardgold it. Hardgold breaking his way out of it, fighting. He knows what's on the line for this match. He's got to put it all on the line now. Got him in the corner. And we're going to the top rope. Some top high rope. impact. High impact moves going out right now. Neck breaker from the top rope. Oh, a sickening thug. Drag Moving away for ourselves. the championship. One, two. No, Salty no. kicks out. Only a two count. Hunter Hardgold still just short of a pinfall. Every pin attempt could mean that you are about to become the world's bestest champion of the world in tonight's main event of Show of the Masters I, 2021. I believe we just saw Salty Marcellus's head get cut open there. Oh, with those vicious strikes to the ground. Oh, swinging neck breaker there. Salty, Mar uh, Salty Marcellus on the ground, and Hargo's looking for some springboard action with that big elbow. Elbow drop from the top rope. Slowly getting him back up. 
Oh, what a face rake! Oh, boo! Oh. And Salty immediately... Very characteristically heelish tactics from Hunter Hardgold. Yeah, trying to do even more damage on the forehead there of Salty. And Hardgold on the outside, trying to get his breath, but Salty's immediately meeting him. That's right. Oh, big elbow to the face of Hunter Hardgold. What will we see from the most well-seasoned wrestler in FLPW? Hunter Hardgold and throws him to the apron. You've seen him hotshot multiple people tonight. And by multiple people, I mean Marcus Gravy in particular. Fight to the outside, big backbreaker Ooh, back there. Hard gold admiring his work. Says so get a stomp in. Some jabs. Another hook to the face. Oh, oh what a Death Valley breaker. driver. That was a neck breaker. Well, that was a neck breaker. My bad. It looked like a Death Valley driver almost. Well, if Death Valley driver is a uh, from the fireman's carry into a slam. Gotcha. So Jim Marcellus oh, racing to his feet, getting on the inside here. Telling number one. And look at this, another hard way. Championship the hard way. opportunity awaits Hunter Hardgold. Will this be one, for the Hardcore Union? Two. No. That was only shortly after a two did Mar Mar uh, Salty Marcellus kick out here. These two wrestlers bring each other I, to the brink. Will we see a golden pin now? Looking for the golden pin. Salty fought out of one, but he won't fight out of this one. Not this time. The golden pin. He's got pin. it He's got the it. championship. One, two. No. No. He kicked out of the golden pin. I don't think anybody's kicked out of that. Marcus Gravy did earlier in the night, barely. Once again, he just needs to do more damage before he's able to put away with the golden pin. We've seen two hard ways, one golden pin. What will it take for Hunter Hardgold to defeat Salty Marcellus? Yeah, Ooh, big Sal clothesline there. Well, Salty Marcellus definitely got the rougher match of the two of these individuals in their semi-final matchups at the beginning of Show of the Masters. Salty Marcellus has had a bit more time to recuperate and once again going a bit south there with that headbutt. And Salty, big Ooh. suplex. He almost hit the referee with that one. Salty Marcellus has to be careful. He needs someone to be able to count this match when he gets that pin attempt. Oh. He can't just flagrantly let the uh, ref catch whatever mess he throws his way. Stab air, some more sapping moves, perhaps. Yep, going for a chin lock. Marcellus right. tried to wear down Hunter Hargold, leading up to uh, another big spot here. Elbowing the ribs, create some space. Salty going for a grab there, but Hargold once again trying to catch his breath on the outside. And this time he actually springs a trap for him. Right Ooh. against the apron, oh lord! Backbreaker with his head kissing the apron. On an already damaged Nobody's not salty. quite done. Throws him against the barricade. Bulldog headlock. Ooh! So much punishment coming Salty Marcellus' way. Hunter Hardgold in perfect form. <laughs> Once again. Given the middle fingers. Oh, oh, he's not done. He resets the count. Not wanting to win by count out. Oh, into the barricade. You wonder maybe he could have won by count. He could have won by count out if he had waited long enough. But uh, this this match is for glory just as much as it is for the title. Where are we going? Salty capitalizing. It looks like Salty wants to get back into the ring. Okay, to get Throws something. Hunter against the barricade. A reversal. As the two of them try to get back into the ring. Really worried about the referee's count there. Salty just into the crowd, but Hardgold's on top. 
No, not for long. Oh, now Ooh. both men bloodied in the ring now. Both men opened up, bleeding from the forehead, uh, just being pushed to their ultimate limit. How much uh, stamina these two have exhibited tonight. A doubly, sh doubly so should go for Salty Marcellus, who had a barn buster of a match before this world championship bout. And now we see a pin. One, two, and a kick not out. quite... You have no idea which of the, these pin attempts is going to end in a three count. So much suspense leading up to the finish of this match. Which wrestler will be able to come out on top? It is anybody's guess. So vicious right-handers finding their way home. Oh, look at the bloodied hand of Hunter Hardgold. Oh, look at the roll up. Got a roll up. One, two. No, oh. almost for the championship. I cannot believe it. So close, but Hunter Hargold is just a a, 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 a a hair's breadth away from clutching this out. The end is in sight. Once again, we've seen a lot of chin holds in this matchup in our main event here. Really wrenching it in. And punch to the arm. Oh, bad grapple and Salty's going oh, to capitalize. Yeah, he but nope. missed. Oh, not quite. Hunter is back in control. He has Salty in the corner. Oh, big drop. Drop kick. kick. Another kick while he's down. Just laying on the punishment here. Oh! oh! Guillotine leg drop. Catching his breath on the outside there for a little moment. And what's he thinking? I think he's what? setting up for some sort of. Oh no, he's, oh, he's not. looking he's for a dirty pin. Dirty pin. One, two. No. Three. Salty fights out of it. He got out of it just in time. And it was Salt Shaker. But no. Oh. Hard. Is this going to be a crucifix? No, oh, Hargul is out. Drag. Hunter Hargul escaping from the Salt Shaker. Wiping the blood out from his out of his eyes, he couldn't see after that arm drag, and Salty maintains. Oh man, a swing here. Any maneuver could put anyone away for the world's bestest championship of the world on the line here Hunter in the main Hargle event. on the top rope. Will this be all it takes for our Salty Marcellus to get a win? Looking for that Samoan drop. This, I believe, is what he used. Samoan drop. This is what he used to beat Ultra Star Adams. One, two. No. Oh. Hunter Hardgold. How much energy does he have left? Able to kick out of the Samoan drop there. Salty throwing hard gold to the ring. Put your hard gold on the top rope now. More huge offense back superplex. Oh, that pain there. Will that be it? Oh, he's going for some big punches. Uh, once again, aggravating that injury to the forehead, that bleeding forehead of hard gold. The back suplex. So Marcel's showing a little bit of confidence here, but he's giving under hard gold the time to get up. Backbreaker. Breaker. The lower back of Hunter Hartgold uh, being rattled by that knee. We see a headlock here. That's only giving Hartgold power to fight out of it. Oh, big slap. Hartgold trying to lift him into a body slam, but Salty reverses it. Crowd going wild here. Any big move could be it. Big mat slam! That high angle there. Some stomps to the chest by Salty Marcellus. 
Snapmare. Once again, we're seeing a lot of Snapmare chin locks from Salty. He really wants to make sure that all of Hard Gold's energy is sapped out, but Hard Gold is preventing those from happening. He knows what happens. Hard Gold wasting no time in breaking out. On once again, another hard way. Hard way. This could be it. If he can pin for the oh, championship. Oh, he's so exhausted. Okay, he spins him around. Bit too much. One, Hot dog and grandstand. Two. Yep. No. You hesitate just a little bit too long there. I don't think Sex or I don't think Salty Marcellus would be able to get out of a golden pin. I think he just outspaced the golden pin attempt there. That kick setting up the pump handle pin there. And Salty Marcellus, well scouted, probably got himself out of grave danger there. Doing some massive damage. And will this be a pin attempt? One, two, no! not quite. World Championship on the line. Main event. Show of the Masters 2021. The last match of an era. Everything on the what? line. Of oh my god. The backbreaker there. For the golden there. pin. I think if he gets it, it'll be curtains for Salty Marcellus. And it looks like it. Pump handle locked in. He's got it. Oh, golden golden pin. pin. Referee in position. One, Championship on the two, line. And three. there he does it. And new world's bestest champion of the world championship title belt holder, Hunter Hardgold of the Hardcore Union is your new world champion. And nobody expected this result. If you looked at when we did the bracket reveal of the um, day one of this tournament, I would not have told you that Hunter Hardgold would make it this far, let alone win the whole damn thing. What a shot in the arm this is going to be to his FLPW career. Now, again, he's known as being a nuisance, a vicious heel known for his dirty tactics, but he had nothing to show for it before this point. No doubles division championships with big pal, longtime pal Eddie Chumbo. No American title. But now in this huge display, he has shown over the hiatus that he is back and better than he's ever been. And he is world champ, gigantic target on his back. Nonetheless, he was able to beat Salty Marcellus and Marcus Gravy in one night to become world's bestest champion of the world. Hunter Hardgold doing more than enough to deserve this championship belt, he came into this tournament as a heel, resulting in some pretty dastardly tactics, tactics that we saw from him and his partner in the lead match, but it was all hard gold against Salty Marcellus. We saw him use his own strength, no two ways about it. Hard gold was the stronger wrestler in this bout, and he will be the new world's bestest champion of the world. What? a main event. This has been FLPW Show of the Masters 2021. God, what a great match. What a great pay-per-view. And yes, and this is the first big FLPW event since uh, Return to Form 2018 so many years ago at this point. Man, remember when we didn't know there was going to be a pandemic? That was great. That was, that was great. 2019, great year. Anyways, um, I just... Since this is over, we've had a week and a half of FLBW excellence. The return of the FLBW was due in no small part to how great actual real-life wrestling has been. You know, having fun watching, and I just want to thank Alex for helping me get back into pro wrestling once again. We've been, we've been meeting up and sort of talking about it and having fun, and that sort of stirred. That's the main reason FLBW has returned to you tonight in this big send-off to the 2K16 era. So I just want to, again, thank you not only for that, but for all of your help in this past week of helping me commentate these streams, making them more fun than they've ever been in the history of the FLPW. Absolute uh, uh, shout-outs to our friends in the wrestling chat that have been watching wrestling uh, with uh, Helton, uh, 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 Music Quill, and now Pro Hybrid. Uh, Fantastic uh, friends. I'm so excited to watch more wrestling with that group. I'm also so excited for more FLPW action in the near future. Uh, the 2K19 era on the horizon. Such an amazing new era of FLPW on its way. Oh my God, I just can't wait. I'm chopping at the bit to see what is going to happen 
All right, so so a bit of a bit of an admin here. Where are we going from here? So we just brought back FLPW, starting with the prelim matches we saw on the 17th, and now we're gonna go away for just a tiny bit. Don't worry, it's not gonna be for two and a half years like it was last time. I am moving everything over to WWE 2K19. I've secured a copy of that game, and I cannot wait to see what I'm able to do with that game in order to tell better stories and bring you better quality matches with that game. But that is going to involve a lot of work on my part, and I'm putting all my heart and soul into this. I'm doing characters and refining. I'm basically going to redo quite a bit of everybody's move sets, refine them, make everybody stand out better than they have ever been. I'm going to do custom Titantron motion graphics. I've finally got a copy of DaVinci Resolve that I'm getting to work with. I don't know if you saw that show of the Masters logo in the background, but that was a result of about 20 minutes or so of fiddling around with it. So imagine what I could do after a month of playing around with it. I really hope that I can live up to the hype that everyone's expecting out of these FLBW streams because we are really going to be returning. I want to I'm not going to give a solid date, I'm not going to come at myself to anything hard because there is a lot of work to be done, but I'm hoping for sometime in November the return of the FOPW, so I really hope you will join me then. I will be posting updates on both the FLPW Twitter account, that's at FLP Wrestling on Twitter if you're not already following that. And, of course, we have our Discord server where I ping out whenever we're live. I have a dev blog section there that I will be frequently updating. I won't be mass pinging you or anything. Don't worry if anybody gets really annoyed by mass everyone pings. I've only been doing that since, you know, pinging people when these streams go live. I won't be doing that with the dev logs, but for those of you interested how the progress is going, I will be giving frequent updates on my progress, maybe daily, maybe not, depending on what happens. So... It'll be a bit, but FLPW soft next November. Absolutely, FLPW, a little bit of a wait, but uh, we assure you it will be worth it. Plenty of uh, uh, new opportunities for wrestlers in the works. We will be seeing each and every one of these championships get defended once that 2K19 era rolls around. We hope you stick around with us for it. Yes, and our champions going into the new era, what a climate it will be. Erica Heyman, your international Canadian champion of the world. Trent McRae, finally, a national US champion of America with that ladder match victory. V Nation, more dominant than they've ever been in their whole career. Three time doubles division champions going into the new era. And your new world's bestest champion of the world championship belt holder, Hunter Hardgold of the Hardcore Union. Now the question is, everybody is going to be raring to get that championship away from him and he has a very hard future ahead of him mind the pun right it'll be anyone's guess and we'll just hope you stay tuned who is going to be the first one to challenge for that championship belt who will be able to step up to the task of going for those canadian and american championships is there going to be a tag team that matches the dominance of v nation we don't know we hope you stick with us this November and or December for FLPW 2K19. I've been Jeffrey McCullough, joined by Alex H. Ridian. Take it easy, everybody.